Amen. <laughs> oh, gosh. We just want to welcome you to our 2014 celebration. This night, we welcome all those that are visiting. We welcome Agape again. Thank you for joining us. We also welcome all of our online visitors on our last week of our Founders' uh, 30th year anniversary celebration. It's been an awesome, awesome week. God has been good, and we are so thankful for him. We're excited to celebrate again and to hear what he's going to say to us again today. Amen? And now we're going to get ready for our devotion tonight. And the one that is leading tonight, none other than Helen Miller. Amen. So let's give them a hand. Amen. As they come forth. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. He's an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Anybody know he's awesome tonight? Clap your hands and give him a praise. We honor the Lord tonight. This is a, a bittersweet night coming to the end of this week. I hate to see it end, but they say all good things must come to an end. <laughs> so we just want to ask you to stand tonight as we go into praise and worship. All that God has said to us this week and the word that he has given us is preparing us for to live here and then on the other side in eternity we're going to live with the Lord forevermore Pastor Jerry I'm looking forward to that when everything is said and done here when it's all over after we have been tried and tested and proven to be worthy of the kingdom and worthy to go to heaven and stay I'm looking for that day and I want everything I do to be motivated, motivated by the fact that I want the Lord to say well done to me. Amen. People have a lot of reasons for doing things, but I want to hear him say well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Come on and clap your hands and give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put them hands together.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, Ezekiel said he saw him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seal. Some call him the rose of a Sharon. Others call him the prince of peace. Oh, but I call Jesus my rock. Oh, Ezekiel said he saw oh, yes. as a meal in the middle of a wheel. Oh, yes. John talked about him oh, yes. in the book of the seven seal. Oh, yes. Some call him the rose of a Sharon. Oh, yes. Others call him the prince of peace. Oh, yes. But I call Jesus my rock. As a wheel in the middle of a wheel oh, yes. And John talked about him oh, yes. In the book of the seven seals oh, yes. Some call him the rose of a Sharon oh, yes. Others call him the prince of peace oh, yes. But I, I call Jesus my rock Oh, I call him Jesus my rock I call him Jesus my rock I call him Jesus Oh, 
Greetings and welcome to our Founders Week 2014, 30 years of ministry. We take this opportunity to welcome you here on behalf of our Chief Apostle, Dr. Mary Banks, and Apostle Michael and Mishika Thomas. During this conference, we encourage you to praise and worship God in song, along with our psalmist, New Anointing, as Portraits Are Dance Ministry unfolds the Word of God through dance. We pray you are spiritually enriched and enlightened. Before the international announcements, these are a few things you should know. You can become a BTI partner today. Receive conference ebooks, unlimited archives, and so much more. Visit BibleTeachers.com for more information. The Lost and Found is located at the MBM Global Conferences table. Please see any conference staff member to report a loss or to turn in any items you may find. If you have any questions or concerns regarding our ministry or the conference schedule, please feel free to ask our staff. During all sessions, please remember to silence your cell phones because all sessions are being taped and recorded. Lastly, throughout this conference, listen attentively, take notes, read along with us in the Word, and Open up your spirit to receive what God is speaking to your heart. And now, our international announcements. You are cordially invited to attend all of our upcoming 2014 conferences. Please mark your calendars for the following spirit-filled teaching and training conferences. Join Dr. Mary Banks, the author of Thought War, in a two-day seminar dealing with offenses, unforgiveness, hurt, and depression. This seminar includes Continental Breakfast, a dramatic production, breakout sessions, and a book signing. It is free and open to all, November 1st and 2nd at BTI Spring, Texas. Join Dr. Banks at our annual Winter Conference 2014 in Freeport, Grand Bahamas on November 7th through November 9th. 
with host pastors Bishop Marvin and Yolanda Weish. You don't want to miss this. If you have an interest in evangelism and teaching God's Word, then the virtual online training course is for you, taught by Apostle Michael Thomas. For more information and to register for the online training courses and all conferences, please visit our website at BibleTeachers.com. If you're looking for uncompromised Christian television, then tune into Bible Teachers Broadcasting Network. BTVN is a subsidiary of Bible Teachers International Ministry and seeks to raise the bar of Christian television. You can visit us online at btbn.tv and also download the BTBN app to your mobile devices. At a computer near you, you can take online Bible courses. You can enjoy Bible classes right in the privacy of your own home. For more information and to enroll, check out our website, BibleTeachers.org. These classes will change your life. Come pray with us online during our watch hours at BibleTeachers.com, Monday through Saturday, starting at 3 a.m. We pray every three hours. The saints of God are standing on the wall, watching as well as praying. And lastly, salvation is a precious gift. It is eternal life with the Father. Make Him your choice today. This concludes our announcements. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Bless the Lord. How many have been blessed this week? It is so awesome. I think this week speak for itself because, you know, mainly when I was being raised up in church, when a pastor have an anniversary, it'd be mostly motivated by money, how much money you can raise, you know, and what, you know, and they'd be looking for a certain amount of number. <laughs> if you don't get that number, they kind of be mad and let you know, huh? But, <laughs> but I, I thank God, you know, because I think a lot of us here has a, a testimony that when God brought us to a place where we really wanted Him, when our hearts really wanted truth, I've heard so many. I know myself when I had been brought up in church, but when God saved me, I told Lord, is this church, I don't never want to go to church again. And, and um, it's just amazing because when I was just praying, I mean, just praying and asking God to, you know, send me somewhere because I know it has to be more in you. And I remember there was times I would fall asleep on my knees praying, asking the Lord to send me somewhere. And, and when, when God, because when God saved me, when I was reading the Bible, I can feel the words coming off the page and actually like penetrating my heart, like a burning sensation on my heart as if God was writing the words on my heart. And, and when I heard, I was driving alone, I think I was coming from work or whatever, and I heard Dr. Banks' voice on radio the same way. <laughs> and God, God spoke to my heart to be there. And when I went there and I heard this minister began to minister I felt the same way the words coming out of her mouth like the words were being written on my heart and I knew that that's where God wanted me 
And that is such a blessing because I know that that's his doing. And nobody have to convince me, convince me that this is God's ministry. I know that we're not following flesh and blood. But this is the work of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you can clap because this is his work. And it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing because some of the first things that I was taught is leaders must lead by example. And that was like rehearsed to us over and over. Leaders must lead by example. In other words, you don't tell people what to do and you not do it yourself. If you're going to lead, you must show them what it is that God is leading you to so that they can follow and so that that is such a blessing because when I look at our apostle Dr. Mary Banks that's what she's been to me she's, she's been a leader by example she don't just preach this word but she live it she live it and I was brought up close and I can testify she live it I'm not going to say not one of us never messed up but when we messed up I have learned how to get up by her example I don't stay down walling in no mud because I messed up Cause I learned by watching her that that if, she, if God pick her up and God still use her, he can pick me up and still use me. If God don't say it over, then it's not over. I said, if God don't say it over, it's not over. Hello? And so that been such an encouragement. It's been such an encouragement to me. And it's been such a blessing. And I can just truly say in my heart that I I truly trust my leaders I trust her as a leader I trust Pastor Mike he's been a friend a brother and a leader that leads by example and so many here so many all the bishops all the pastor I mean God picked him a crew I mean he picked them a crew you know we we didn't have no reps no reputations because when Dr. Banks said that all you all are going to be teaching and nations and everything, we looked at her like she woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And somebody needed to put her to sleep and wake up again. You're talking to people that never had no background of teaching or preaching. Never saw ourselves as being a minister of God. But God got away. I say, God got away. And we found out it's not our ability, but it's his ability. When he calls you, he anoints, and he does the work. And I bless the Lord for that. And I just give grace for my lovely wife being with me. Isn't she beautiful? I really thank God for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has rejuvenated me. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna let her talk. <laughs> I got to give I thank God for Bishop Michelle for being here tonight. I see you, Bishop. Let's give her a hand. I 
I remember Bishop Michelle said that, you know, when I was telling her about Karen and everything, she said, she said yeah, yeah, that's good. She said, you need some balance. <laughs> Bishop Michelle said, you need some balance. That, that, that's God. That'll balance. <laughs> so Bishop Michelle, she sure is balancing me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> but I'm just so blessed. I'm so blessed. Um, I haven't gotten to know um, Doc personally that well, but I'm from Canada location. But from the time I heard um, the word over in Canada, I knew that um, I needed to be at BT. And even though... I was stubborn, you know, because I never grew up in church or anything like that. And um, so there's a lot of stuff in me that God was showing me and that I wasn't ready to get rid of. So I le ended up leaving BT for like three years and went back to the Adventist church, went into the Adventist church and, you know, got all tangled and indoctrinated. And all I know is that being in ministry, I knew that I had a bit of influence from our apostle. And being in the Adventist church around people that are hungry for God, you know, they were sending me here, sending me there to, to go and preach. But I knew that the influence that I had in me was from an apostle. And that is what, as, as I went out, I just... Even when I was on um, certain platforms, I just started to get convicted because I knew that these people needed more. And a lot of them <clears throat> weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. So you have someone in there that's filled with the Holy Ghost and has true, a true apostle or the influence of a true apostle. So they were gravitating towards that. And just seeing the hunger that people have for God, I knew that I needed to come back home. Because there's no way that I could be the evangelist that I'm called to be um, outside of an apostle. I knew that I needed to come back to BT to be effective in the lives of people that are hungering for God. They're not, they don't want us. They want God. You know, so I knew that I had to come back under the apostle. And the one thing that blessed me with Apostle Banks is... I think I came to her like three times and like, oh, I'm sorry, I did this and I did that and I talked about you. And she's like, that's okay, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even, she, she didn't even remember probably, you know, anything, <laughs> you know, but I knew I needed to apologize. But just that, that um, warmth and that love and the fact that, you know, she didn't even regard it, it was so beautiful. And that's what made me truly know that you know i'm under beautiful leadership you know so and also apostle mike always i remember one time i sat mad in the church and apostle mike just came up to me he's like you know we love you right because <laughs> i'm sitting there like this but i just encourage anyone that um has left bt or even online watching online and they don't want to come back just come back home I just want to say come back home because there's nothing better than being under a true apostle because it's only that, it's that way that God is going to choose to, to grow you and to edify you so that you can bless others. Amen? Amen. So thank God. Amen. Let us all stand. Amen. So we can hear the word tonight. I know God is going to just solidify everything that he have already said to us and take us deeper. So we want everybody, we used to do an exercise a long time ago, is open your spirit. So everybody just, just open your spirit and knows mean just empty out and trust what God wants to say to you. Let, don't let your doctrine or your belief system get in the way of God. Let God speak to, speak to your heart directly and you will know that he's God and you'll be hearing from him. Let's, let's give a hand for our apostle, Dr. Mary Banks.
I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Our North Carolina preacher saints. Glory to God. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Best tonight. Praise the Lord. Coming in all the way from North Carolina. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We love him. Praise be Jesus. It's just a good thing to see you walk in, bitch. Pastor, it's just good to see you walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good to us. Isn't he good? Amen. Amen. He's just good. Amen. I, I look around. I got so many sons in the Lord. So many sons in the Lord. Amen. And they, they coming home. Praise to Jesus. Amen. Because the table is set. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I, I'm, evidently I didn't get the memo. Praise to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Now, y'all know I love to see everybody white. <laughs> Glory to God. That's my thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember Baltimore, those, those hundred women in white? Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's, that's what made me want to be saved. Glory to God. Some women were singing a song, we are the holy women of highway. And I wasn't one of those women. I, I wasn't holy. Glory to God. I said, boy, if I come back up here next year, I'm going to be holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, the, the next year when I, I was saved, I went, I went back home and got saved. That next year I got right in that line. Went the holy women of the highway. <laughs> got me a special white suit. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. You'd be surprised the things that impress a person in church. Amen. I was sitting there crying. These women marching out in this long, long, the, the church was a theater. And, and they, they had a long way to march. And I was looking at the women, they talking about, we in a hundred women. Highway. Like, oh, Jesus. I'm a silly in highway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I got to get saved. <laughs> I got to get holy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God. Amen. Everything about tradition wasn't bad, saints. Amen. Now, everything wasn't bad. 
Glory to God. Amen. Some things just, mm, one thing about it, we know we better stay saved. Then we learn that we better stay saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. We're going a little bit further tonight. I mean, I looked over there and I saw uh, Brother Peter, praise the Lord. And amen. He come in with his wife, Yvonne. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you. Amen. I haven't seen you since the last since I came to your house and had dinner that night, remember? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You thought I didn't recognize you, didn't you? Uh, I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But we, we're so happy to have you with us tonight. Amen. It's just, it's just a blessing thing. Glory to God. This has been a good week. It's been a good week. It's been a, it's been a good week. And I, have, I tell you, I have been so blessed by agape. Come on, let's give them a hand. I mean, I have been blessed by agape. They have been so faithful every night. Glory to God. And that's, that's just so wonderful. It's just, I mean, I, I don't have words to express. My heart is just full. Amen. My heart is just full. Because that's how the body of Christ is supposed to be. And I was sitting there thinking, glory to God, Jimmy, we set up something. We coming to your church. Amen. We coming to your church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Because I want to come back and I want to teach. I want to teach faith. I want to teach faith. Glory to God. God, God, God wants me to teach faith in light of this revelation. So make so, sort of make, and, and faith is still the Holy Ghost. But God wants you to see how to operate in it. That will make our way so much easier. Amen. So much easier. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's so good to see Belinda and Sean in tonight. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. People are still being blessed by your broadcast down in the, in the, in the nations. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're, we're just excited that the body is working together. The body is working together. We're, we're crossing all of these lines. Amen. And glory to God. Bishop Michelle, our senior bishop, is in the house. Come on now. Glory to God. <laughs> Hey, man, it's good to see you come in. There's a, there's a young lady here that looks so much like Michelle. You, you, have you seen her? You saw her? She looks so much. She was in there serving the other night. Who is she at? And Michelle, you got to look at she. I thought it was you. I am so serious. Even when she, I was close up on her, she looks so much like you. I am so serious. Even her profile, everything. I think she's in this church, isn't she, Tanya? <laughs> Who is it? It's her. Look at her. She even got on glasses like you. Praise you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. She was coming. She was coming from the back over there. The other night, and I'm like, is that Michelle coming in the door right there? Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. And our apostle is with us again tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And his wife, Pastor Michika. Come on. She's, she don't say much, but she, amen. She's a presence. Amen. She's a presence. Glory to God. And from Leesburg, bless the Lord, pastoring our headquarters church. Amen. God is so good, saints. He is just good. He is just good. And I honor, amen, Bishop Bias tonight. Come on, let's give God a praise in his presence here tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm so glad that, that God met us this week. Amen. And let's, let us be prayerful tonight that, that he will indeed speak again tonight. Amen. amen. Bless the Lord. There's so much we, I want to deal with, so I'm going to get started right now. Let's go into chapter 4. And our base scripture is coming from St. John, the 15th chapter. 
We'll be talking about that tonight. This, the title of this chapter is, Every Branch is Purged. Every Branch is Purged. We're going to start at the very beginning of this chapter. Verses 1, 2, and 3. St. John 15, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I am the true vine, mm -hmm. and my father is the husband man. Yeah, he is. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay. Now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Now you're clean through the what? Word. Through the word. So what has made us clean? The word. The word of God. The washing of water of regeneration by the word. Amen. Glory to God. I am the vine and my father is the husband man. What is the husband man? Is he not the one that tends the vines? He's the one that, that takes care of the vineyard. He's the one that it belongs to. Amen. He's the one that the vineyard belongs to. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is saying, that God is the one. He's the, he's the one that tends to the, vine, the, vine, the vineyard. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. But he said something here in this second verse. I want all of us to read this together. I want all of us to read it together. What did it say? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. All right, now let's look at this, glory to God, because I was, um, as I write here, as I was writing this, uh, and sitting there looking out over the city, I heard the Lord speak to me about purging. But now, being God, he knew. He knew what was in my heart. Why is it necessary for the sons of God to be purged? Which means to be cleansed, pruned, and made pure. I ask this question in light of the fact that we have put on the new man. We got on a new man who is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. He's created in, in, in righteousness and true holiness. So my question is, if we're putting on the new man, glory to God, why do we have to be purged? Hallelujah. Listen to him. Amen. The new man is renewed in righteousness and the knowledge of God. Uh, he, has, he has no desire to sin. Nor is he wanton for the things of this world. He doesn't want these things. He doesn't want anything from this world. The new man is who? Christ in the flesh. Don't forget that definition. Jesus in the flesh. That's the new man. Jesus in the flesh. That's the new man. But now let's look at a definition here. According to... Vines expository, the word purge means to thoroughly cleanse, to purify, and to prune. In every instance where the meaning is to cleanse or purify, this cleansing is done by the blood of Jesus in the salvation experience or by the believer in his walk. So every word that this word purging is used, it's either, it either refers to being purged by the blood of Jesus at the salvation experience or the believer himself purging himself in his walk. And I've cited some scriptures here. But before I go into those scriptures, I want to look back at this, this scripture in John 15, where God, in, in verse 2, he says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Notice, notice, notice this setting here is every branch that's already in him. So he's talking about 
he's talking about those who are already born again. Already born again, already in Christ. Amen? Already in Christ. He says, now, if they don't bear fruit, God take them away. Hmm? If they don't bear fruit, God take, take them away. Hallelujah. What does that mean, take away? Do we, do we know what that really means? Do you know what it means to be taken away, taken out of God? Taken out of Christ? See, people say that you can't lose your salvation. But now, if you read this scripture here, it sounds like you can be in him and don't bear forth any fruit. The Father will take you out of him. Is that what it says? Every branch in me, who is the one, that's, who is the one speaking? Jesus. Jesus Christ is speaking. He said, every branch that's in him that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Who is the he here? The God, the husband man. He's the one that's tilling the soil. He's the one that's planted the vineyard. He did the planting. He's the one that put the soul in Christ. Are you working with me? He's the one that did that. He's the one that, that took the soul out of the flesh and put it in the spirit. He's the one that put the spirit in the body. Are you working with me? He's the one that made Jesus in the flesh to new man. Are you working with me? He's the one that joined the soul to the Holy Ghost so that they would be one spirit. Are you working with me? But he said, if you don't bear forth fruit after I've done all of that, then I'll take you out of Christ. So much for once saved, always saved. Hmm? Hello? And some people fall back on the scripture. Well, now the scripture said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's not leaving you. He's taking you out of him. <laughs> Amen. He said, I'm going to take you out. If you don't bear forth fruit, you will be taken out of Christ. Are you hearing God? Are, are, you, are you hearing him? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He says, I'm going to take you out of him. I want, I want, I want, you, to, uh, I want you to massage your little spirit with that because as, my, as uh, Apostle Mike said last night, we, we can't prefer to hold on to a belief system that the word refutes. If we believe that we could never lose our salvation, the scripture just told us we could. Simple scripture says if we don't bear any fruit, there's some people that are born again don't do anything for God. They don't do anything for God. And 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 let me let me even qualify that. Glory to God. There there are people that are born again that work all the time. That I mean work in the church all the time and still ain't working for God. They working for themselves. They working for themselves because the church affords them a, a might afford them a decent lifestyle. Come on, are you hearing God? See, because when you working for somebody, you do what He tell you to do. But when you working for yourself, you do the things that you have outlined for you to do. Is that right? Glory to God. When you go to work on another man's job, you don't tell him what you're gonna do. Come on now, in the natural, do you? You don't do that. You go there and find out what he wants you to do. Is that right? There are many people that are going to miss heaven because they determined themselves what it was they were going to do in the church. And they're going to miss heaven. Because the gift was given to supply the body with the thing that it was that was compacted in you with. That's the thing God want to pour into his body. What he put in us is what he wants to pour in. Not what our intellect comes up with. Not what our education comes up with. Not what our intelligence comes up with. Come on, somebody. Because you can get sinners to do that. You don't have to be saved to do those kinds of things. Are you working with me? 
Glory to God. So I want to caution you, glory to God, that there are many, many of those, and make sure you're not one of those who, who are born again. You're in the church, and you're working, 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 but you're doing your own thing. You're doing the thing that satisfies you. You're not doing the thing that the husband man planted you to do. Are you, are you hearing God? We're trying to get to heaven, aren't we? we? We're trying to get to heaven. I want to get to heaven, saying, glory to God. And I think most of us in here want to get there. Glory to God. And see, these are the foxes that, that spoil the vine. These are the things that people are going to be faced with when they stand before God and find out they can't make it in. They, they can't make it into the kingdom because, glory to God, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. Glory to God. You got, you got to be Christ or you're not, you nothing. Amen. Christ was always obedient. So when you're walking after Christ, you're always obedient to God. Always. And you don't regard flesh. You make no provisions for your flesh. That's what he's saying. You don't make any provisions for your flesh. You don't, you don't decide what it is you are going to do with regard to your flesh. Because God may lead you into some areas that are uncomfortable to your flesh. Come on, somebody. And so you don't make the decision that I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that because it's not going to be comfortable. Are, are, you, are you hearing God? Amen. Amen. So every... Everyone, everyone that's in God that doesn't bear fruit, God will take them out. Everyone that's in Christ, the scriptures say he will take them out. God take them out if they don't bear forth fruit. And see, the Bible tells us to test the fruit. That's why whether you tell whether it's of God or not. Amen. Test the fruit. See, don't you think if he told us to test the fruit, he tests it? To see if you bringing forth the fruit that he planted you to bring forth. Don't you know that, that when God saved us, he, know, he gave us a capability. He gave us a particular measure. Every one of us were given the measure of Christ. Come on, are you working with me? Glory to God. And that measure means how, how much or how far we're to go in him. For instance, my measure I thought was Fort Lauderdale. I might have thought that. But my measure has extended far beyond Fort Lauderdale. My measure has gone to Atlanta, and it's gone to Canada, it's gone to the Caribbean, it's gone to England, it's gone, glory to God, to Trinidad, it's gone... To, my measure just keeps going. It just keeps going. I, I, I counted at least 30-something uh, countries. Glory to God. And Daniel can attest to this. Glory to God. We counted countries that are downloading BTBN. Amen. Countries all around the world that are downloading our app on the BlackBerry. Amen. Watching BTBN. So my measure is going. It's going. Don't you know that God had a plan for your life before you ever got in it? He had a plan. Just like Bishop was saying earlier. They didn't know. They didn't know that they were going to be going to nations. I told Bishop and, and, and Johnny May, glory to God, Bishop Pryor, I told you guys, I said, you guys are going to be going from country to country preaching the gospel. Glory to God. And that's what they're doing today. They're, going from, they're not just going from state to state. They're going from nation to nation, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't believe that back then. They didn't believe it. But God had given me a glimpse of their measure. He had given me a glimpse of their measure. Glory to God. And so if your measure, your, let me say this, your measure was known to God before you were ever put in Christ. And God compacted you with what was necessary for you to accomplish that measure. And so when you pull back, are you hearing God? When you pull back, when you won't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you 
and guide you in ministry, glory to God, you're not going to produce the fruit that you were planted to produce. And that's the sin of omission. Glory to God. You omitted to do the things that God had slated for you to do. I remember Apostle Paul, watch this now, you tell me, you answer this. Apostle Paul was somewhere on a ship, traveling, and th he had a vision. And see, Paul was like me. Paul wasn't one of those people that could, that could um, say, well, I don't know if God talking to me or not. I don't know if that was God. Amen. Might have been my own mind or my own heart. See, some of us don't have that luxury. Some of us know when God talking to us. We know. And Paul knew it was God. And he saw this Macedonian man standing there in, before him and saying, come on over here. Come. Come over here. Glory to God. Wanting Paul to come and bring his wisdom, bring his knowledge of the mystery to them in Macedonia. And Paul was heading someplace else. But when he got off that ship, he said, we got to go to Macedonia. Because he knew God. And see, the same thing is true. You know, I've had people that say, you know, Doc, come bring us this word. We, we need this word. I'm gone. All I got to know is it's God. You know? And then people will, I'm just saying, saying, I feel, I feel something here. You got to learn how to be led by the Holy Ghost. You got you got if you if you're not willing for the Holy Spirit to lead you, if you're going to lead yourself, then you're not worthy of the kingdom. That's what he's saying. If I can't tell you what to do, if you work for me and I can't tell you what to do, I can't tell you where to go. I can't tell you what to do with the gift I gave you. You're not worthy for the kingdom. Are you hearing God? He's saying, if I, you know, I'm, I'm, I know the measure that I have slated for you to walk in. Don't resist me there. Don't resist me there. There was a man came into the ministry. It was very, uh, it was kind of funny to me. He came into the ministry out in Texas. He visited the ministry in Texas. He was just, you know, visiting. He was coming quite frequently. And one day, Bishop Riley was there. And Bishop Riley got up and he testified how, glory to God, had, God had spoken to me and told me it was the Rileys that were to go over to Jamaica. And how they had packed up from South Carolina and went to Jamaica. And he, and he was saying how he knew it was God. You know, he, he didn't have no, you know, uh, contention in his spirit about it. And, and he, when he went before God, God was, would let him know that it was him that was sending him there. And that man got up and left the BT. That man, and, and so we asked, I said, well, Doc, why are you, uh, he was a doctor. I said, Doctor, why are you, what happened? He said, I, 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 uh, I don't know, you may tell me to go to India somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I love this word, but I'll get you online. <laughs> he said, he said Ain't no doubt. I don't know. You may say Africa, India, anywhere, glory to God. I'm not ready to go nowhere. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. I, I had to just laugh, praise you, Jesus. I said, heaven, Lord, glory to God. I said, you know, Bishop, Bishop them had the option of saying no. Amen. They, you know, we don't control people's lives. Amen. They, they, he had the option to say, no, doc, I can't do it. My children too young or, or whatever, anything. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But God is so good. Anyway, but I want us to know that we're dealing with people that are already saved. People that are already saved. Full of the Holy Ghost. In Christ. Are you hearing God? But they're not bearing forth fruit. And it equals not bearing fruit if you're not bringing forth the fruit God 
has planted you to bring forth. See, it doesn't matter. I can go over here. God can tell me, say, go over there on that side of the room and pray for Belinda or Sean. And I can go on this side of the room and pray for Johnny Mack. But God told me to go over there. I may pray for Johnny May and Johnny May get healed. But Johnny May is healing. Guess what now? The excellency of the power is of who? God. Johnny May may get healed, but she got healed by the power of God and by her faith. Her faith in God had nothing to do with me. Her faith in God and his relationship with her. And so now I have pacified myself. I pacified me. I heard God tell me to go over there, but I didn't want to go over there. I didn't want to go that way. I want to go this way. And, 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 I, and I'm doing a work over here. I'm doing a, I'm doing a work. And, and, and people getting blessed. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you, the word is spirit. If a dog preached the word, people can be blessed. Amen. Hey, amen. It don't take a son now, but a dog can preach it. There are people that are unsaved that can preach the word and you get saved. Come on. People can be in sin up to their eyeballs in sin and preach the gospel and you get saved. Are you, are you, hello. Come on, because the word is spirit. And it is life. Are you working with me? And, and the Holy Ghost is the one that is working through the vessel. Amen. To perform the work of God. So people are getting blessed based upon their relationship with God or their faith in God. Amen. But I pacified myself. I pacified myself because I'm working and I see results. I see things happening. But glory to God and I, and I continue on because I'm, I'm, I'm pacified with the fact that I got, I got some food over here. You know, I've done some things. But there's a sin on the book against me. There's a, still a sin on the book against me. And that sin is disobedience. That sin is disobedience. Because God had a reason he wanted me to go over there. Because there was something he had compacted in me that was needed over there. More so than maybe what he put in Mike. Mike might have not have been the one to go over there. Promise might have not have been the one that needed to go over there. God needed me to go over there. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we don't know what, I don't, I would never know the extent of this measure that is going to start when I go over here. I would never know because I never go. And that has nothing to do with, because someone was sharing with me once, once, amen, and this was a very good point that they brought up about sometimes people have a passion to, to be used by God. It's a very good point. Amen. Some of us, amen, may have a passion to be used by God. Sometimes that passion to be used by God does not impress God. Because sometimes we want to be used by God, amen, so that we can be glorified. So that people just can say, oh boy, boy, Doc show can preach, or Doc show this, or Doc show that. Amen. That is not... God is not impressed with just that passion. He's not impressed with that passion. God is impressed when my passion is to see you come into a right relationship with him. That's the only thing that impresses him. When my passion is to see you come into a right relationship with him. Now, if that's my passion, it doesn't matter whether I'm the one that bring you or whether Shell is the one that bring you or whether Jimmy is the one that bring you. I'm just glad that you got broke. Right. Come on. Amen. That's what distinguishes the kind of passion. What is the kind of passion that we have? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'm talking about producing fruit now. The fruit that's acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. Some of us have a passion. We want God to use us because we always wanted to be somebody. We don't, we, we can't see ourselves taking a back seat. Mm -mm. 
We always wanted to be somebody. And, and, and the gospel got a lot of spotlights. It's, 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 you know, we can create a spotlight in the gospel. I can have a spotlight. I can, I can see sometimes your gift, help me out here, Bishop. Sometimes our gift, the gift of the evangelist, the evangel let's go with the evangelist gift. Sometimes the evangelist gift is just to witness one-on-one. -on -one. There are some people that can witness to you one-on-one -on -one and get you saved. Uh-huh. There are some people that can witness one-on-one -on -one and get you to come to the church. They're church builders. They can bring folks to the church when nobody else can. They can look around in the church and say, I brought that one in, I brought that one in, I brought that one in, I brought that one in. That's evangelism. You can take that same person and put them up here with a microphone and they like a fish out of water. They like a fish out of water. They get confounded. They get confounded up here. This is that's that's because that's not their measure. Come on, come on, somebody. That's that's not their measure. Their measure, glory to God, is over here one on one. You can make it, man. You can. You don't have to be like that. God, let me tell you. Let me tell you what God did for me, and I know He'll do it. They can convince you one on one. Glory to God. They what their measure is not to be here. And so what is happening? They're trying to get here. They're trying to get a microphone. They're trying to get a camera. They're trying to get an audience. They're trying to get an audience. When God gave them an audience of one. One at a time. One at a time. There are some people that spend their whole eternity in the church glory to God and never bring in nobody if you minister to one soul and got him say glory to God you done you done did a whole lot you done kept one soul out of hell you understand what I'm saying glory to God and so you'll miss God you'll miss out on what God had for you because you are forfeiting it you're forfeiting it trying to stand here because this seems to be glamorous. This, this seems to be glamorous. And, and especially if you're standing here because after you finish preaching, somebody's going to take an offering for you. I'm talking about the fruit that God is talking about here. See, that's not fruit unto God. That's not fruit. Glory to God. I have traveled great distances. Charlene, I tell you, she was, she was handling the books back then, selling books. I've gone great. The people called me and said, Dr. Banks, come and come and preach to us. And, and I done set up this conference and, and we're going to have about 300 people there. Glory to God. And, and it's about two or 300 miles away from here. Glory to God. And we get there and there'd be three people sitting up in there. <laughs> we done bought a trunk load of books. <laughs> <laughs> and it's three, it's three or four people sitting up in there. You know? Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, if you got six, two of them you broke. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But when I get there, I got to preach. I got to preach like it was a full house. Amen, because that's a setup. That's a setup to see what, 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 what's my motivation. Am I motivated when there's a crowd? Huh? Am I motivated when there's a crowd or can I do it when there's one or two? <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Remember those days, huh? Praise you, Jesus. But the scriptures say if you show yourself faithful, over few. God will make you ruler over what? Many. Praise the Lord. Lord, I paid a lot of dues back in those days. <laughs> Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. And, will, and willing to pay it now. Still willing to pay it. Glory to God. I went from preaching to three people. Glory to God. 
to preaching to 93 million households on TVN. Ain't too many preachers can say that. That you was actually preaching to 93 million households. And the average household, they say, has about four people in it. So you do the math. Ain't, God has to set a platform like that. For, for you, only him can do that. Praise the Lord. But you got to first show, show yourself faithful. You got to show yourself faithful over a few. Amen. And I, the, the fruit of that is still going on. The fruit of that, amen, that one, that, 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 that first show, amen, the fruit of it is still going on. We got people all out in California that order our materials. People that, that I'm telling you, I don't even know those people. But they came on our mailing list by the way of buying our first book. Amen. And we're still ministering to those people today. Amen. Fifteen years later, we're still ministering to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you hearing God? Amen. So we're talking about fruit bearing now. <clears throat> and you got to remember now, you can't, Jesus made some statements. He said, you can't bear any fruit without being in him. Amen. Can't bear the fruit. Now, this is what I want us to go. Let's talk about what kind of fruit is he talking about. Well, there's some scriptures down here. But I want to go to what kind of fruit he's talking about. Look at John 12. St. John 12 and 24. And let's establish the fruit first. St. John 12, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it about it alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Uh-huh. If a grain Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fall into the ground and die. Huh? Except, brother, it fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. Who, who's the grain of wheat he's talking about here? Huh? Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. But if it die, it bringeth forth what? Much fruit. Let me say to you, there are many other scriptures. You can look them up, look them up on your own time. Amen. But the fruit he's talking about here is not the fruit of the Spirit. He's not talking about that nine fruit of the Spirit that you see in Galatians 5. He's talking about souls. And he's talking about all those things that pertain to godliness. Bringing forth, see, because sometimes it's not so much as a soul that you bring into the kingdom, but it might be, it might be, it might be that, that God set you up to minister life or minister principles that will bring people that's already in the kingdom to godliness. That's fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because some people are walking outside the boundaries of the faith. And, 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 and there are a lot of Christians that will see people walking outside the boundaries of the faith and won't say anything to them. Somebody they don't want to offend. I don't, I don't want to I don't, I don't offend nobody. I don't, I'm not trying. I'm not going to You can't say stuff to people these days. Yes, I can. If, <laughs> yes, I can. If they're walking outside of the boundaries of the faith, I can lovingly tell them, praise the Lord, that God is not pleased with that. God's not pleased with that. Amen. I can lovingly tell them that. Amen. Glory to God. But if, I try, if I'm trying to protect myself, Hmm? Because when, when we worry about offense, we're trying to protect our own personage. We're, trying to, we're making provisions for what? Our flesh. Is that right? I don't, want you to, I, don't want, I don't want you to attack me now. I don't want you mad at me. Who are you? Glory to God. You're supposed to be a witness for what Christ is doing. Glory to God. If the offense, let the offense stay with Christ. Let them be offended with Christ. Are you, are you hearing God? Forget about you. You don't matter in this. Amen. What matters is that you, you have said something to that soul to try to bring that soul back on course. 
if this is not a situation where you're trying to save somebody, but if you're trying to bring people back inside of godliness, you have done what God set you up to do. Do you hear me? You have done what God set you up to do. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And, that, and once you have done what God set you up to do, glory to God, whatever that person does now after that, that's not, it's not on, it's, the blood is not on your hand. But there's some of us that, that live in the same house with folks and won't even minister to them. Won't even minister to them. Glory to God. They, they stay in the same house with them. And then some, sometimes people that are in the church, sometimes you got more, I mean, we're talking about fruit now. You got, you got more than one saint living in the same house. And, 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 it, and if, um, if one have a negative disposition, glory to God, and the other one ministers to that disposition, that other one get offended sometimes. May, may get offended because, you know, they always telling me, always finding fault with me, but then get right. And nobody see no fault. That's, that's, that's all. Just get right. And then we won't have to talk about that no more. Hello. If, if you if you change if you change, glory to God. And let me tell you something. I, I can't I can't iterate this enough. I cannot iterate this enough. There are people that God has favored. God has favored. They have enjoyed the favor of God. They have enjoyed the favor of God by hearing this truth. And not only hearing it, been put in a position to minister. There are so many people sitting right out there in this room that, that don't feel like they're in a the position to minister. But there's some of us that have been put in a position to minister and won't minister. There's some of us that are wearing titles that don't work in the lives of God's people. Come on. We, 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 we wear a title, but we, we come to church. Yeah. Glory to God. And hello. We, we, and we want these titles because we want to sit on the front row or sit behind a, a cloth or, or something, you know. <laughs> Glory to God. Hello. We want to be the one that they take our, our briefcase at the door. And we want to be the one that gets escorted in and, 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 and you know, and given all the special treatment and stuff. But when, it, when the smoke clears, when God look at you and say, what have you done in the lives of my people? Yes, sir. People going to hell because they don't work in the lives of God's people. And especially, see, this is what makes it so dangerous. Especially if God give you the privilege. Because you know what he said? He said, it's an honor. He said, it's an honor. He said, no man taketh this honor unto himself. But it's God that ordained. It's God that takes us out from among men, ordain us in things pertaining to God for men. Not so that we could have a title. Not so we can be called pastor or called evangelist or called prophet. Amen. God ordained us in things pertaining to him so that we can pour those things back into the hearts of his people. Come on, somebody. And there are going to be people that got titles, I'm telling you now. It's going to be a lot of title wearers in hell. People that got titles going to be in hell, glory. They're going to be in hell. And then now we got some that can't work without an audience. They can't work unless they, they got a, some accolades. Somebody got to, they want somebody to pat them on the back or somebody to say, you know, sister so-and-so really blessed me. And, and you know, and boy, I tell you, glory to God, if it wasn't for Doc, glory to God, I don't know where, honey. That Sister Jerry was talking about we don't have testimony service. Ask her why we don't have it. <laughs> because early, early, we started right here when the church was this way. And I was up there, poor people was up there, and we didn't have nothing but these, these two babies right here. And every, we had testimony service. 
And every testimony was, boy, Dr. Branch, Branch did this. Dr. Branch did this. Oh, and I just love Dr. Branch. And I was, I sit there one day and I said, wait a minute, I ain't heard Jesus yet. <laughs> that thing scared me. I said, oh, no, you ain't going to make no idol out of me. Amen. God, we going to knock me down because <laughs> y'all done built me up some idol. I said, stop. No more testimony, sir. Y'all can't testify of God. Don't testify of nothing. I want to hear what God did. The people need to know what God did. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So when people say they got a testimony now, I tell them, write it down. And let us read it. Let, let, let somebody in authority read it first. So I make sure it was something, you could say something God did. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You got to have some safeguards in your life. You better set up some safeguards because that stuff will big you up. It'll swell your head up. And you'll start seeing yourself as God. You'll put yourself equal with God. Oh, no, not me. No, I'm not going to run that risk. But I'm going to say it again now. All us around here with these titles. Ain't bringing forth no fruit. Hmm? God can't see nothing you did. Can't see nothing you're doing. What you, what, what you did? What you doing for me? Huh? And, then, and what you doing for me that you're not compensated for? Because some people have worked for God as long as they're getting compensated in some way. And sometimes compensation is not money. Sometimes compensation is accolades and spotlights. Come on, somebody. Huh? Are y'all hearing God? Amen. God said, what you, do, what you doing for me? What you doing? Can I see what you're doing for me? What are you doing with the gift? You're not talking about you coming to the church doing a bunch of stuff. What is the gift doing? That's what he want to know. What is the gift? That gift, that gift that I gave you. That gift to preach. That gift to teach. That gift to counsel. Come on now. What is that gift doing? I'm talking about what you doing. What the gift doing? And if the gift not working, it's because you the hindrance. Because God want to work in the lives of his people. He wants to work in the lives of his people. So that gift not working through you, you the hindrance. Well, you say, well, what kind of hindrance am I? You ain't holy. Ain't holy. The gift not going to work. You ain't holy. You ain't holy. You ain't holy. The gift not consistent. It's not consistent when you're not holy. Not holy. Not holy. Number two, you don't love folk. You don't love people. You can't bring forth fruit when you don't love people. See, because bringing forth fruit takes patience. You got to be patient with God, people. Because they're not going to change overnight. Come on, somebody. They're not going to change overnight. And they're not going to change at every word you tell them. Just because you minister to them once and they don't change, glory to God, amen. Don't you think that that wash your hand? Huh? You can't be bothered. You, you, what, what is, what, 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 who walk around here with titles don't want to be bothered with folk? What you doing with one of God's titles and don't want to be bothered with people? Jesus died for people. The gift is for people. Are y'all hearing God? You know, if I was one of them people, glory to God, and I wasn't going to change, I wasn't going to change in my way, you know what I'd do? I'd get up and say, I, you can have to get <laughs> I stepped down. <laughs> I stepped down. See, the Bible says, the Bible says in these last days, them folks that, some of them folks gonna say, no, I, I ain't no prophet. I ain't no. <laughs> but that thing gonna get so tight. It's gonna get so tight. Before I step down, I changed. I changed. If God gave you the gift, change. If God gave you the gift, change. Change your ways. Where's God? You know, you so beautiful. You's a nice looking woman. Nice. Nice looking. And you're intelligent. Very intelligent. 
And I hope you eating this up. I hope you eating it up. Because there's not going to be any forbearance to this. None. If we don't bring forth the fruit that God has designed, that God called fruit, fruit that's being produced by the gift he put in us. Hmm? If we don't bring forth fruit, you know why I say step down? Some, some people need to step down because some people wear titles that ain't theirs. That's, that's what I'm saying. Some people, Pastor Mike, are actually walking in titles, walking with titles that are not theirs. Sometimes we've made mistakes, ordaining people. Yeah, we've ordained people in some things that they they not. Mm -mm. We blew it. Mm-hmm, yeah. We just have to own up to that. Amen. That sometimes we've ordained people and they just don't have no fruit of, don't no, have no fruit of that gift. No fruit of it. They, and, and it seemed like the fruit fall or, or fail after they get ordained. It looked like they were doing it. They were working for the ordination. But as soon as they get ordained, like the tree get bare. Like, like where's the fruit now? I've had to go to God and repent. Say, God, if I missed, if I miss you then, glory to God, help me, Lord. Forgive me. Give me. Praise you, Jesus. Hello, saints. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. The point is, they're in God. And he said, God, take them away. You, did you see that? They say, God, take them out of him. So the fruit that he's talking about is the work that you do in people's lives. Do you bring people into the kingdom? Do you use your gift? Are you maximizing the gift that God gave you? Hmm? Are you hearing God? We're talking about purging now. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right. Let's go to page 21. In John 5 and 2, the phrase purges is a Greek word for pruning. <clears throat> I want us to get this down in our spirit. Many years ago, in the course rightly dividing the word, I cited a principle that insists the Father speaks to us in terms we're able to comprehend. Jesus, like Paul, taught using terms we could relate to. Uh, in this chapter, Jesus teaches purging from the perspective of the keeper of the vineyard pruning a plant or a tree in his garden. In this particular teaching, He's talking from the perspective that the, the husband man, who is God, is actually pruning. That's how this word purges is used. It's used to be from the Greek word that means prune, to prune. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But it also is interesting that the branches that are pruned are the ones that are already bearing fruit. You notice that? The ones that he's pruning are the ones that's already bringing forth fruit. Well, if the Father is speaking to us in our own language now, in a way that we can relate to, then we need to understand the nature of pruning. There's an article I took here from Wikipedia, Lord to God, and I'm going to read a little bit of it. It says, pruning is the cutting and removing of parts of a fruit tree. Some of you people, landscapers, know about pruning, right? Amen. It covers a number of techniques that control growth. Now, all of the techniques of prune, pruning, this is what they do. This is the purpose of pruning. It controls the growth, remove dead or diseased wood, and stimulate the formation of flowers and fruit buds. Pruning often means cutting branches back to where they are closer to the parent vine. It may also mean removal of young shoots, buds, leaves, etc. K. 
careful attention, a, attention to pruning and training young trees affects their later productivity and longevity. Reasons to prune plants include dead wood removal, shaping by controlling or directing the growth, improving or maintaining health, reducing the risk of falling branches. Are you hearing God? So when you prune, you, resi you, you reduce the risk of the branch falling off, falling away from the vine. We can readily see now why the master spoke as he did. It is the intent of the father. Listen to me really good here. It is the intent of the father to control and direct our spiritual growth and productivity while at the same time reduce the risk of us falling away. That's what pruning, pruning me. But that's right. You the landscaper. You know. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Father wants to control our growth patterns and our direction, the growth of the, the direction of our growth so that we can become more productive. And also pruning reduces the risk of us because it, it has a cutting back in it that make, brings us closer back, back closer to the parent. Because this is what God showed me in the vision when I was writing this. You know how a plant can grow, a tree can grow, and then the branches just grow way out. And see, I used to, I used to work on in, in the fields where they, you know, like in the apple orchards and, and the peach orchards and whatnot. And a branch can grow out and be heavily laden with, with, with fruit. I mean, laden down with fruit. Glory to God. And it's so laden down until a strong wind come and it could break that plant. And I, now, look, watch this. It's got a lot of fruit on it. It's got a lot of fruit on it, but it couldn't stand that strong wind. It couldn't stand that strong wind. It broke under the pressure of that wind, even though it had fruit. Are you hearing God? Sometimes, glory to God, we can produce fruit and collect too much other stuff. We can produce fruit and, and begin to collect some things, you know, along the way. Are, are you hearing? You know how sometimes a plant can grow so far out, glory to God, and other vines start attaching themselves to it and wrapping around it, glory to God, and after a while you can't hardly see the original branch. You can't hardly see that original branch. The tree's still over there with all the other branches. But that branch that grew in that direction was growing in the direction where there were certain weeds and stuff that grew up and entangled themselves around that branch. Are you hearing God? So sometimes, glory to God, if you can't recognize it, sometimes if you can't cut all those branches off, sometimes you got to cut that branch back. And you got to train it, you got to shape it to grow in another direction. Come on, somebody. You got to cut it back closer to the, to the parent, to the trunk of the tree, glory to God, closer to the parent. So it, first of all, the closer it comes back to the parent, the stronger it is. C come on, somebody. That's the stronger it is, glory to God. And it's not laying down with its own fruit. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? So he said, every branch in me that's bringing forth fruit, I'm going to prune it so it can bring forth some more fruit. And, 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 and even though it's bringing forth fruit, I got to make sure it doesn't grow in a direction, glory to God, that will cause it to be at risk of falling away. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you something that God will do. Amen. See, someone like us, especially me, I, I, I have enjoyed ministry. I've, God has given me the privilege to minister. It's an honor to minister. 
Amen. He's given me that honor. He's given me that honor and that privilege. Glory to God. And I bear a lot of fruit. You all say you're my fruit. Amen. I bear a lot of fruit. But I see God at times pruning me back. Pruning me back. I remember I, I, the first pruning. When I first started going down to that huge television network, when I first went down there, glory to God, I used to go every month they were calling me to go down there for something, to, to do a show. And I remember God saying, don't go no more. When the time is right, they'll call you. It was 15 years later when they called. God told me, don't go anymore. He was pruning me because, glory to God, and, and, and you know what he said to me? He said, if you continue to go, you are going to be famous. Now, which one of y'all, if you knew you was on a platform that was going to make you famous, you'd step off of it? Tell the truth, shame, death. Most of us wouldn't. Most of us wouldn't. If you know that you're on a platform that's going to make you famous. God said, if you go, you're going to be famous. And once you get famous, you're going to be sought after. And you're going to go out preaching to all these places where they're seeking after you. You're going to go, but you're not going to have a demonstration. You're not going to have the proof. You're not going to have the evidence of what you're preaching. He says, stay home and raise me a people that can be the evidence of this word. And that's what I did. Stayed home and raised up God a people. Amen. Stayed home and raised up God a people. Amen. About 15 years later, I got a call. I said, well, why did y'all call me? I said, because Matt told us to find, find the person that is the voice of God today. I say, what? How my name come up? Amen. But that was the reason they gave me. And I'm seeing the fruit of it, and you, you will see the fruit shortly. I'm not going to say nothing else, praise God, but you're going to see the fruit. Amen. We've got a lot of fruit, amen, from this last episode that we did. Amen. But God is about to explode something now. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. But <clears throat> when God is pruning, it's because you are fruit bearer. You're bearing fruit. And he's going to cut, cut you back. And he's going to control your growth. And he's going to let you grow in the direction he wants you to grow in. Are you hearing God? You're going to grow in the direction that he's set for you to grow. Now, if you resist that, or well, some people resist that. They resist that. Glory to God. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because, you know, there's, that scripture says hard kick against the prick. Because a prick is a spike. And that mule stand there and just kick and kick and kick until that, 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 that he kick his own hoof down to the quick. To, and, it, and, and, it's, and it's sore. Make his, his own foot sore. Are you hearing God? And so when you start pulling against the growth pattern that God set for your life, you're, you're, you're putting tension on that branch. You're putting, because God's trying to pull you that way, and you're steady pulling back this way. Are you hearing God? You're putting tension on that branch, praise the Lord, and it will break. It will break. And if it don't break, if you keep pulling on it, God said, I'll, I'll break it. I'll put you out, take you out. Because you don't bring forth no fruit. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Matthew 25. 
Matthew 25 and 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, mm -hmm. Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, weeping where thou hast not sown, mm -hmm. and gathering where there has not strawed. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid, and I went and hit thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered. Now this, notice what he said here. This now he gave a man, he gave one two talents, one five talent, and one one talent. And the one he gave one talent said, when he came, when the master came back, he said, he said, now, I, I knew you was a hard man. You, you gather where you have not sown. <laughs> you gather where you've not, not sown, uh, or you reap, rather, where you've not sown, and you gather where you've not strong. So what I got to give you is what you already had. This is yours. This is yours. In other words, you didn't go... You, God gave you the gift. You didn't go out there and take nobody from the devil and bring them to God, to the kingdom of God. You just held on to what you had. You had a gift of life, and you didn't go give it to nobody else. You had the gift of life and didn't give it to nobody. And we need to ask ourselves why. We need to ask ourselves, why am I saved and I don't feel like saving nobody else? Come on. Why, why am I saving? I don't, I'm not even motivated to witness. I'm not even motivated to, 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 to go in and try to deliver anybody else. I don't, I'm not even motivated to mention Jesus to nobody. But I can talk about trash all day long. I can talk about the community gossip all day long. I can talk about what she said about that one and what this one did and, and that one did. I can talk about everything but Jesus. You know what this lesson ought to do? It ought to make us ask ourselves, are we spiritual? Am I spiritual? Because everybody that's wearing a title is not spiritual. Come on, somebody. Everybody that's wearing a title is not spiritual. You can't be spiritual if you don't want to be bothered with people. How are you spiritual? How are you gifted? How are you gifted if you, you don't have time for people? Why is there no motivation in you? Why you don't get up? Glory to God, you know that some days we get up, glory to God, and we say, God, you know, lead me to somebody. Lead me. Lead me. I want to I wanna witness to somebody today. I want to tell somebody about Jesus. I got so convicted traveling. I travel all the time. I'm on a plane almost every week, glory to God. Amen. And I got so convicted, glory to God, I said, you know how many flights I've taken over the last few weeks? And if somebody sitting next to me, glory to God, if somebody sitting next to me, did I mention Jesus? And I know that, that, that planes receive government funding, glory to God, and so there's a guideline. They can really, you know, they can really get on you and, and, and ban you from flying. It, it, for, amen for witnessing on the plane. Because if that person begin to complain, yeah, they can. So you know what I started doing? I said, well, to get around that, not to break no laws, I got a book called Thought War. And I got another called Be Ye Perfect. So I just take those two books with me. And just happen to have them laying on my table, my little tray table in front of me. You know, just so they could see them, you see. And maybe we might get a discussion. You, you know, they might bring about a little discussion. Now, now if they bring about a discussion, they initiated it. You, you, <laughs> hello. Praise, praise the Lord. So I told them, I said, every time you pack me now, make sure you pack my book in my briefcase. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So I, that's, that might be a conversation piece. I get a chance to minister to the Lord. But we got to ask ourselves, why is it that I don't feel motivated? Cause, cause now, see, this is this is the problem. The problem is this right here. This, this is why I'm gonna show you why, why. Come here, Jesus. Who's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Got a new Jesus? My other Jesus bailed on me. Hey, Jesus. Got many Jesuses. He's just in another body, huh? Come on now. All right, I got you. Amen. Now, where's that soul? Yeah, I got a new soul too. Okay. 
All right. He ain't sinning, huh? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this soul is in this body. Jesus is in this body here. Where the body? Come here, come here, body. Amen. So now, what do you think, what is it, I want to ask you something. If Jesus is the new man in the flesh, this is the, this flesh is the new man. Created after God in righteousness and true holiness. What is he doing in there? Is he just hanging around? He just there, he just there so that, yeah, he don't have nowhere else to go, so he's just in you. He's just hanging out in you. And, and now what it is, what we have done is made him the witness of what we're doing. This is what we've done. We made him the witness instead of us being the witness for what he's doing. And so Jesus is saying, I want to talk about God. I want to go minister to this person over here. I want to do some work in the saints' lives. I want to go and save somebody that's lost. But the soul says, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered that. Now, sister so-and-so and them went over there, and they wasn't listening to them. I ain't, I ain't going over there. Praise the Lord. Amen. God, people get mad when you go, mm, tired. All kind of reasons. All kind of discussion. Amen. And Je so Jesus, he got, he's back here now being quenched, being grieved. Huh? Because his body now is not uh, being allowed to do what it is his purpose was in it to do. Are you hearing God? So now when Jesus, when Jesus is in the flesh, this is a new man, you got to ask yourself, if this is the new man in my body, why is it my body? Why is it my mouth never want to talk about God? Why don't I ever mind spiritual things if this man controls the flesh? Hmm? If this is the new man and God told me to put him on, why is it that he ne he's never interested in spiritual things? Hmm? Why, why is it that, that he, glory to God, see, if, 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 if um, you got me, Pastor? Amen. Yeah. Why, why is he never, why is this, my body never, never interested in godliness? Never. Why is it that the Lord is saying, turn, go over here this way. Jesus want to go over here this way. But the soul says, no, you're going over here. Huh? Jesus said now, because the soul says, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but it might be a little dangerous over there. I don't know, people might be doing this, that, 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 whatever. Amen. But then, now, but Jesus said, he said, but I told you, I've already overcome the world. Any persecution that befall you, I've already overcome it. I've already overcome it. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? So now, he said, now I'm telling you these things. Notice what he said in the scripture. He said, I'm telling you these things so that when they happen, you'll know that I told you. So, you, so you'll anticipate that. So now, saints, I'm telling you, know, I, don't, I, I intended to go another way here, but God got me this way. Now, why is it, why is it that this new man is not allowed to control your spiritual growth? Do you know you grow, you grow by following him? Because the scriptures say that we will grow up into him. He knows how to take you into situations, huh? Take you into situations to prove your, your spiritual location, to identify your spiritual location. It's called comprehending the lens. 
Amen. He'll take you into some situation that will identify your spiritual location at that moment. That's why, glory to God, you can raise up a person, glory to God, and, and like somebody said that they was in a meeting and they were talking, they were telling, telling another preacher some things, and they said, somebody, somebody else that was in that meeting said, God, you sound like Dr. Banks. It seemed like Dr. Banks was in that meeting. Because that person was trained. That person was trained that when you, when you, no matter where you are, if you're in the midst of sin, you're going to address it. You're going to address it. And you can give instruction in the name of the Lord and in the meekness of the Spirit. But you give it. And you don't have to take down and you don't have to be intimidated. Come on, somebody. And, that, and God had to put that person in a position to show them that they could do it. And they did it. Thank you, Jesus. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So now, if, if pruning is to it's determine the direction of our growth and to control our growth, you may think... <clears throat> You may think that in this position, you take your body over here in this position, and you see two or three, you see, you see two or three fruit blooming on your, on your branch, you may think that's sufficient. When God now had a plan, and let me, let me show you something with God. God is about quality too. He, he's not only about quantity, he's about quality. Because when it comes down to pruning, when it comes down to pruning and controlling the direction of our growth. Let me show you, let me show you what God would do. Remember Philip? After, the, after, they, after they killed Stephen, Philip went, was on his way somewhere, and God made sure that, that the path that he took caused him to meet up with an Ethiopian. He had no intention of preaching that easy open. But God made sure. God made sure that he met up with the Ethiopian. And he ministered to the Ethiopian. And then he ministered Christ. He ministered salvation. And then the Ethiopian said, wait a minute, here, hold it. Wait a minute, Philip, uh, Mr. Mr. Whoever your name is. There's some water right there. Uh, what, you know, what forbid me to be baptized? So, so... He made Philip baptize him right there. Because I accept this man that Isaiah talking about. Amen. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Glory to God. And so he baptized him. Now, that one man went down into Ethiopia and evangelized that nation. You know how I know? Because the scripture said before the last apostle died, these apostles he had evangelized the whole known world. And we only read where one Ethiopian ever heard that word. But his nation was evangelized. Are y'all hearing God? So, in, so you don't know, it's not about, it's not about there are 10 over here and 1,500 over there. Huh? It might be in that 1,500 is God sent you there to meet that one that's sitting there. That one that's in that 1500. Come on, somebody. He said, I want to control, I want to control your growth. I want to control the direction that you grow in. Are you hearing God? Are, are you hearing God? I want to control that. I don't want you telling me what you're going to do. I don't want you telling me where you're going. I don't want you telling me where you're not going. I don't want you telling me what you're going to do. I don't want you telling me what you're not going to do. Glory to God. And even if you don't say it, don't think it in your heart. Because you're not producing fruit. You're not producing fruit. And you know what he said? I don't care if you're producing fruit. I don't care if fruit growing on your tree where you at. You still got a sin against you called omission, disobedience. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? See, and, and let me... Oh, I got to say this. Y'all can sit down a minute, fellas. 
I got to say this, because the devil don't want me to say it. So I'm going to say it in the house. Say it in the house. Either we believe in apostolic order or we don't. Either we believe in it or we don't. I was reading the scriptures the other day, and Paul said, he was writing to the churches, one of those churches, and he said, I'm, he said, I sent Titus over there to do this, and I sent Ephroditus down to somewhere, and he sent Timothy down to Crete, you know, and whatnot. Glory to God. You all don't think I have that authority. Let me show you what you think. You think that there are some people that are just close to me that want to be, want to, that want to get in some of these, uh, some spotlights or something, so they just my yes folks, and they just go wherever I say go. That's what some of y'all think. That's what some of you think. <laughs> but there are some people following Jesus. There's some people that don't see their apostle after the flesh. What you gonna do, Bishop, when you, you got you got you got churches up in you got a church up in North Northern Florida and church up in uh, Port St. Lucie and all up wherever your other churches are, when you go there and you see it's lacking in some things. You can't always be the one strengthening them. You got to have people that you have trained Amen. to go and send to that location and say, build up the saints. Build up the saints. And, and you know what? You're supposed to have the oversight enough to be able to tell them what they need to preach when they get there. Come, come on. This is what, and you know, when, when Bishop McGirt goes somewhere, glory to God, or some of these other leaders around here, Bishop Johnny May, whatever, when they go somewhere, they say, well, Doc, what do you think I need to, what, 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 do, you, what do you want me to do there? What do you think I'll need to, which, which study guide I need to preach out? Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. Oh, y'all hearing God. Praise the Lord. See, you got to not see your leader. If your leader is truly an apostle, you cannot see them after the flesh. Glory to God. If, if God can, can take a leader, and stand them up here before you and teach you something you never heard before. And your spirit says, that's God. Then why isn't it God when he say, Mr. Gloria, I need you to go over to West Palm Beach and minister over there for four days. That's not God. Suddenly that's not God because you got something to do. Suddenly, that's not God now because, but now God can, 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 can stand me up here and, boy, and, and, boy, and things can come up. We need the apostle here to answer that. We need the apostle to do this, and we need the apostle to do that until the apostle say, sir, God wants you to go over this. And you don't even know what you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes you don't even know what you're supposed to be doing. That's why you have leaders. Leaders are supposed to show you the way. Praise the Lord. Show you the heart of God. And some of us leaders are not, are not leading in our, under our own strength. We lead by the Holy Ghost. Don't you know, glory to God, that I, I can, all the leaders that I have in this ministry, I know their strengths and I know their weaknesses. I know, glory to God, that who I can send to Trinidad. I know who I can send to Palm Beach. I know who I can send the bell blade. I know their strengths. I know this one don't need to go walking into that situation, but I need to send this one to that situation and maybe take this one and put them over here in this situation. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Are you hearing God? So now let's not be, let's, let's not be, let's don't walk halfway in this thing. If we're going to walk in, let's walk all the way in it. Let's walk all the way in it. Because if, other than that, you don't need a leader. You, you, know, you don't need no leader. If you don't really believe in them, you don't need them. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Are y'all working with me? So do we, are we understanding pruning here? Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at John 16, 13. 
No, wait a minute. Know what happened to this man? Look at the 29th verse in that, that, that uh, Matthew 25. Um, what happened to that man? Look in, 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 in uh, verse 28. 28. Uh-huh. Take for the talent from him uh -huh. and give it unto him, which have ten talents. Oh, oh. For but everyone? For everyone that has that has shall be given, mm -hmm. and he shall have abundance. But okay. for him that have not, mm -hmm. shall be taken away even that which he hath. All right. And, and what happens to the servant? And cast ye the unprofitable servant into out of darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Throw him in the fire. That's how God see that. God said, if you're not going to do what I tell you to do, glory God, if, you, if I gave you a gift, and you're sitting on that gift and you're not doing anything with it or you're not doing what I told you to do with it, you're unprofitable to me. See, because he said, you know what he's saying? He's saying you're just like Balaam. He said you're just like Balaam. You wanted to go with those men because it was profitable to go. Because they had some money. You want to do the things that satisfy you. Whether it's money or where this comfort zone. Come on, somebody. Now let's get let's go someplace else. Let's go here. What why what give me another reason why we can't bring forth fruit. Sometimes we are a rotten fruit. Sometimes we rotten. In a time preacher. <laughs> Sometimes we ride in ourselves. We don't even have no good seed to plant in other folks' lives. We can't plant gentleness. We can't plant mercy. We can't plant love because we don't have none of those ourselves. We don't have none of that ourselves. We can't plant long suffering and forbearance. Huh? We can't plant none of that because we don't have none of that. We can't plant patience. We can't plant kindness. We can't plant none of that stuff because we rotten. The fruit that we was done rotted. We done rotted. We rotted. And the seed. Glory to God, the seed is like, glory to God. Man, I need... We don't have none of that food ourselves. We can't give what we don't have. Can't give what we don't have. You know, I heard a long time ago when, when God called me to the ministry, I told God up front, I don't love people. I don't love people the way you say you got to love folks. You got to help me there. I, I don't have that kind of love. I don't stay up all night praying for people. When I get sleep, I go to sleep. And you see, so that really, I, I, did, I told him, I said, if I got to have that kind of love, you got to help me develop that. And I laid on my face before God, and I prayed before God. Amen. I laid down and scratched out before God. Every day I get off from work, I just lay down in that bedroom and just call on Jesus, lay on my face, and call on Jesus. Sometimes I'd be up under the bed. And I said, God, you got to show it to me. And I would pray and pray and pray until finally one day I hit the prayer of travail. I hit the prayer of travail. And I was travailing in the spirit. And I saw myself birthing souls in the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was right after that that Bible teachers started. Right after that. Glory to God. And I, and, and I said, God, I got to keep this here in my heart. I got to keep this I got to keep this feeling for people in my heart. Glory to God, because I'm no good to you if I don't care about people. I'm no good for you. I'm no, I'm no good to you if I don't care nothing about folks. Glory to God. And let me tell you something that will keep your fruit rotten. You know the thing that rot fruit quick? Selfishness. Selfishness. See, any man that's going to, any man that's going to follow God, got to deny himself. Nothing can be about you. It can't be, glory to God, that we just do stuff when we're going to benefit. Come on, somebody. Huh? 
selfishness. Hallelujah. I, it, this is what, what I intended to minister tonight, but this is what God wanted me to minister. But for whatever the reason is, Bishop, God got me here. Amen. Selfishness. You know what God say? Can I just say what he said? I'm going to do it anyway, so. I'm going to say what he said. You know what God say? See? See, you, let me tell you where you're missing at. You'll hear this, and you'll say, boy, that word show came tonight. And that's it. That's it. You got all your notes. That's it. You got some. You know, you got your notes and stuff. But you know what God said? God say, if you got a title and don't have the gift that go with the title, give up the title. Give up the title. Who knows that better than you? Who knows what, who, who can look at their lives, can't look at your life and see what you produce? If I'm talking about if you know you're not that. I'm not talking about if you're that and you're just lazy. <laughs> or, that, or that you are uh, an evangelist or a pastor and you just selfish and, 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 and evil hearted. Because there are some people that are that that are that have titles, Bishop. Hearts are evil. That's real. Let me tell you something. If you don't love people, if you don't have love in your heart, what's in your heart? What's in your heart if you don't love people? Apostle, what's in your heart if you don't love people? Hatred. Some people hate everybody. Some people just hatred, just full of hatred. They don't like nobody. If you don't love people, what's in your heart? If it's not full of love, what's in it? What's, what is it full of? And if it's not full of love, does it belong to God? Because God is love. That's why the scriptures say, examine yourself to see if you be where? In the faith. See if you in the faith. Because that title don't put you in the faith. It doesn't put us in the faith. Because God wants these titles to bring forth some fruit. And if we got that title, God say, bring forth the fruit now. I want to see the fruit. Where's the fruit of your ordination? I ordain you because I've compacted you with something. You ought to be bringing forth the thing that I put in you. Bring it forth. Where is it? What is this Jesus doing in you? Is it that you're so selfish? You're so caught up in yourself that he cannot, he's not allowed to do what it is that he was placed in you to do? You've usurped authority over him. Now he's witnessing what you're doing. Because if Jesus is witnessing what you're doing, he's sending up a bad report on you. He said, you're denying me before men. He said, you're denying me before men. And if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before my father. You get in front of men, glory to God, I've, I've encased you with people. And you don't do anything for them. You're not charitable, you're not loving, you're not kind, you're not giving, you're not forbearing, you're not long-suffering, you're not patient, then what are you? But we the same people that testify, I got Jesus on the inside. God talking about fruit tonight. 
I got stuck right here. I got stuck right here. God wants us to produce fruit. Because time winding up. God, you think God impressed with all of us sitting up in here? Glory to God, dressed up. Amen. Dressed down and, and don't have no fruit to show for this, this gift he gave us. He don't have, he's not impressed if we don't have no fruit. Huh? You got to look around. You got to see. You got to be able to point it out. Where's your fruit? Where's, where's the fruit at? Where's the fruit? Huh? Mike, can you point out any fruit? Ramos, can you point out any fruit? Tony, you got any fruit? Bishop, you got any fruit? We got to be able to point to our fruit. Where's the fruit? Because you know what he said? He said, in that day when we stand before him, he said, he said our fruit <coughs> is going to come up before him, and some of that fruit may be lost. He said, some of, some of, maybe, he said, some of the fruit may be burned. Some of them may go into hell. Some of the very people we brought into the kingdom may end up in hell. He said, but at that point, we'll suffer loss, but we ourselves will be saved. But now you stand up there and you don't have no fruit. You don't have any fruit. You, he, what, what happened to that unprofitable servant? He was cast into outer darkness. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? Praise the Lord. Thank you, fellas. Come on, let's give God a praise. God stuck me there tonight. But this is a very serious lesson. It's a very serious lesson. Very serious lesson. Okay, the question is, how do they move? There's only one way. There's only one way to move. Tell yourself the truth. Tell you, be honest with you. Tell yourself the truth. And then repent. And obey God. The reason, I, the reason I say tell yourself the truth. Because until you admit. Where you really are. You can't move. And this message was not meant to condemn us. But it's meant for us to identify ourselves. We need to identify ourselves. God wants us to identify where we really are. Because all there's not going to be a slate of hand. Or you know. There's not going to be any any things to hide behind and all of that stuff went in the judgment. There's not going to be any cunning craftiness and any, you know, any slick words or nothing to get us by. So it wasn't meant to condemn us, but it sure was meant for us to examine ourselves and see if we are actually producing fruit. And if we are not, be honest with yourself. <clears throat> be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I'm not producing fruit. Or I'm not kind. I'm not loving. I'm not patient. I'm not forgiving. I don't love the people of God. I don't do any work in their lives. I am selfish. It is about me. I do regard things that are comfortable for me. So you got to tell yourself the truth. You got to tell yourself, I love people that are always giving to me. Some people are like that. They love you as long as you're handing them, as long as you're doing something for them. But then, Lord, what do I do for people? You have to ask yourself, what, what do I do for people? 
what do I really do for people that doesn't profit me? You know, you know what I mean? Because some of us are due for folks that, that we know we can get a return on, on that investment. But what, what about the things I do for people that I know I'm not going to get nothing back? They, not, they can't do anything for me. Huh? Some people would do things for me, Dr. Banks, that they won't do for the little lady member. They can see both of us in the same situation. They'll help me but won't help that other person. God judges that. Now God judges that now. He does. He judges that. So tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth. And if you tell yourself the truth, now repent. Define your own spiritual location. You know what that is? That's agreeing with God. Agreeing with what God, where God say you are. And sometimes we'll, we, we'll, we'll accept, you know, we'll, get a, we'll, we'll hear a message. Let me show you God. We'll hear a message like this. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll get on our knees and we'll repent. We'll, we'll talk to God about it. Because we just heard that message. See, so we get on our knees and repent. And we get up and we go out building. And we don't change. Watch this now. We don't change. And then somebody may be close to us that know us. Might even be your husband. They come to you and say, da 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 X, Y, Z. Same thing God was saying in the message. He come to you and say, you get offended with him. You might get offended with him. You understand what I'm saying? But when you want to change, you don't get offended. It might hurt your little heart to know that I haven't moved yet, but, God, but you don't get offended. When you really want righteousness, when you really want to be holy, you don't care if a dog come and tell you what God said. You know, are y'all hearing God tonight? I, I, God is the one chose th this message tonight. He chose this because he don't want us to have been here all the week and leave Rome. Hmm? He don't want us to leave Rome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other questions? Possibly anything you want to add to this? Friday night. There's something I wanted to minister, but I'm not going to do it. Jesus said, I only do those things I see the Father do. I'm going to say that for the next time when I come. And I want to get with Bishop Byers and if if it's if we can come over to fellowship with you. Maybe bring the other second part to you. Are there any questions? If you've heard God, see now. Now watch this. I was down in the country, and God made an altar call. God made an altar call. And I remember we had about 30 of our leaders there. And they got up and ran to the altar. My, my ministers got up and came to the altar. And the other ministers saw my ministers at the altar, and they felt like, well, I guess we better go. It looked bad. And after they, after that altar call, boy, they blasted me after church. Those other ministers. They said, how dare I make an altar call to include ministers of the gospel in front of lay members. How do we move? 
when God speak, we respond. That's how we move. He said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Now, see, I done preached a lot of stuff tonight. And if you find yourself in any of it, God don't care if you the archbishop. He don't care. Glory to God, if you sit next to Gabriel. <laughs> or on the right hand of Michael. When God called for repentance, he want every one of us to repent that are guilty. Are y'all hearing God? See, I, I, you know, what do I want for my birthday? I want us all to be holy. I want us to be, I want us to, I want us to get out of here tonight holy and acceptable unto God. I want, I want us to be so acceptable unto God. Amen? Because, see, then we'll have something to shout about. We can dance then. Now, if God was talking to you, if he was talking to you, if any part of this message had your name on it, then I'd find my way. I'd find my way to this altar. If any part of it, part of us, he no say manasseh. Holy God, holy God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, you, you don't have to be a leader, but if you're not bearing fruit yes. in God, you don't have to have a title, but don't feel like you're exempt from what God is saying. Hallelujah. Don't feel like you're exempt. And something that Doc, amen, also said you can appear to prosper in other areas but that does not mean God is pleased my God Michael Jackson pros prospered his whole life but that don't mean God was pleased with his life hallelujah so let us not get caught up in how how our life appear but if God is talking let us just respond to God. Let us just respond to God. Hallelujah. And some of us need to be honest that, that some of us are just offended by the route that God has placed us on. That this is just the route, you know. And something else, Doc, you said, you, you know, those of us that are bear fruit, we can't hang our hat on what we've done. We got to continue to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Father, have your way. Have your way, God. And Lord God, have mercy on us, God. Lord God, have mercy on us, God. Wherever we are, God, that is wrong, God. We ask your forgiveness right now. In Jesus' name, God. And Lord God, I'm only standing to pray, God. But, but Lord God, I, I'm repenting before you as well, God. Oh God, have mercy, God. In Jesus' name, God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, God, when, when we caused you to take a back seat, God. And we lived our lives according to our own plans and our, our own mind, God. And, and not giving le the leeway to you, God. Not yielding to you, God. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy when we made our own decision, God. And not giving you preeminence over our life, God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy when we love the things that you hate, God. And hate the things that you love, God. Have mercy, oh God. In Jesus' name, God. Have mercy, God, when we slacked up on our children, God, and didn't raise them up, Lord God, under the same admonition of holiness that we were raised in, God. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy when we put things before you, God. In Jesus' name. Some of us have put boyfriends and girlfriends and 
husbands and wives and, and jobs and education and all manner of things before you, God. Have mercy right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Some of us have just loved ourselves, God. We love the image in the mirror, God. But have not love for you, God. Have mercy, God. Forgive us this night, God. Some have put our, their children before you, God. Have mercy, God. We want to be holy, God. We want to be righteous, God. We have been a many things, God. But we want to be holy and, and righteous and walk upright in your sight. Have mercy, God. Be merciful when we were when we was not gentle when we were not kind when we were not loving God we confess these things to you openly tonight have mercy God some of us was overly judgmental have mercy God in Jesus name oh God don't turn us away God oh God don't leave us to our own demise God but have mercy, God, in Jesus' name, God. And Lord God, there's some people in here that are lost, God. And I ask, oh God, that if their heart is right right now, God, if they want you right now, God, I ask that you forgive them of their sins, God. And I ask that you baptize them in your spirit right now, in Jesus' name. But we that have your spirit, God, and have not done appropriately with it, God, we ask your forgiveness, God. We ask your mercy, God, in Jesus' name. When you told us to go right and we went left, God, we ask your forgiveness, God. Mm, Jesus, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place, oh God. In Jesus' name, God, let us be true leaders, God true men and women of God men that you can be proud of God women that you can be proud of oh God in Jesus name in Jesus name have your way God have your way God in Jesus name forgive our weakness forgive our shortcomings forgive the decisions that we made God but right now we turn to your God my, my, my. We turn to you right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, you said that we can repent. You said if my people would turn from their wicked ways, just pray and seek my face, I will hear from heaven. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, where you have confronted us, God, we humble ourselves, oh, God, in Jesus' name. All of us are at this altar for various reasons, but wherever you have confronted, we humble ourselves. We don't stand in our own arrogance, God. We don't stand, oh, God, as if nothing is wrong with us, God. But we humble ourselves. We acknowledge our fault, God. We acknowledge our lack, God. We acknowledge our shortcomings, God. Right now before you, God. Not caring about the opinion of man. Not caring about the opinion of woman, God. But, oh God, holding your opinion. Dear God, we humble ourselves, God. We turn to you, God. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we know you to be a God of mercy, God. We know you to be a God of grace, God. And you will know why it's cast us out, God. If we just humble ourselves. You said a contrite heart, God, and a, a broken heart spirit and a contrite heart you said you would not despise it God so as we come to you God in the spirit of contriteness God in the spirit of brokenness right now God we ask your forgiveness God we humble ourselves God to our fellow man to God those that we wrong God those that we have dis discarded God we humble ourselves have your way God have your way, God. 
have your way, God. In Jesus' name, oh God. In Jesus, Jesus' name. In Jesus, Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus. If we could just touch you right now, God. I say, if we could just touch you right now, God. If we could just appeal to a higher court right now, God. If we could just touch you right now, God. We know, oh God. We know that it'll be well with our soul, God. So we turn to you right now. We turn to you right now, God. And we ask you, God, for your forgiveness and for your grace, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord God, as we get up from this place, God, let us not get up the same. In Jesus' name, whatever we have confessed at this altar, God, let, let us leave it here, God. And you consume it, God, with a consuming fire, God. Remember our sins no more, God. Remember our arrogance no more, God. Remember our faults no more, God. Let it not come up before you again, God. Let it not come and stink in your nostrils again, God. But consume it, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I remember David say, my sin is forever before me, God. But you say he's a man after your own heart, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of us are not comfortable, God, messing up, God. Some of us are not comfortable, God, not pleasing you, God. Some of us are not comfortable, God, falling short, God. Some of us are begging and pleading, God, because as Paul, God, we press toward the mark of a high calling, God, a high calling in Jesus' name, God. And we don't speak as ones that have made it, God, but as one that is pressing, God. Every day, God, every day, God, we press, we press, and we press, God. And oh, God, Oh, somebody ought to give God the glory. Oh, somebody ought to give God the praise. For it is him who gives space for repentance. We ought to give him a better praise. We ought to give him a better praise. We ought to get, a, get on fire for God. Hallelujah. We too calm and collected. God is too good. Amen. We could be in hell right now but for the guilt of the message we could be in hell right now but it was a wonderful merciful God come on somebody hallelujah somebody ought to praise him in here somebody ought to lift him up somebody ought to glorify him hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus stop looking at the clock because when we were sinners the clock didn't matter hallelujah Jesus we ought to bless the name of the Lord where would we be if it were not for his mercy if it wasn't for his grace, we ought to lift him up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. The Bible says it's the goodness of the Lord that leadeth to repentance. The Bible says through love and kindness have I drawn thee. We ought to bless the name of the Lord. He could have cast us out. Hallelujah, Jesus. But he gave us more life. He gave us more time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Hey! Hallelujah, Jesus. I remember you said one time that God will wait till you get to your dead end street. And when there is nowhere to go. And God will say, you can begin again. Hallelujah, Jesus. If God gave somebody a better chance, a new chance tonight, you ought to jump on your feet and give God the praise. That's the least you could do is shout glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. I say the least you could do is shout glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. The least you could do is let the devil know that God redeemed, that God is a delivering God. I say the least you could do and just put your hands together. Somebody in the hospital tonight can't clap their hands, can't jump up and down, but you in here because the mercy of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know our hands look the same. The feet look the same. And even the face look the same. But somebody sung a song a long time ago. I know I've been changed. I may look the same, but I know I've been changed. If you gave it to God tonight, and you know you left it on the altar, you got right to praise God. I say, you got a reason, because God gave you mercy. I say, God gave you grace. Hey! Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody better know that you know that you know that you've been changed. That you've been changed. It's not an outward change, but it's something that takes place on the inside. Hallelujah, Jesus. I can't speak for everybody, but Brian, I don't feel like I used to feel. I don't think like I used to think. I don't even talk like I used to talk. Oh, my God. Come on, church. Come on, sons of God. Come on, sons of God. Because the devil wants to make you think that your salvation is not real. I say the devil wants to make you think that you're just like the world. But that's a lie. I've been born two times. I've been born two times. Oh. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Somebody ought to put those hands together and just tell God, thank you. Somebody ought to tell him something sweet, something nice. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes we miss it. We miss those opportunities to praise God. We so busy focusing on the past. Baby, the past is the past. It can't do nothing for you now. You can't do nothing for it now. But God gave you a thing called time. And he said, now live in the present, but live like I'm coming back tomorrow. Live like right now may be your last hour. Anybody here in God? You can't do nothing about the past, but if you get right before God. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church. Come on, somebody. Do you remember? all night carrying service remember when we wanted to be saved and filled with the holy ghost do you ever remember that see some of us got it with the laying on of hands but some of us got it saying jesus 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 and we wasn't even saying jesus no more we were saying jesus 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 but somebody helped us pray somebody say keep on calling him keep on calling him keep on calling him the old folk didn't know a lot of things, but they knew there was power in the name of Jesus. They knew that there was power in the name of Jesus. And they knew if a heart get open, that God would come in. Wow! We ought to give God a better praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The devil's, the devil's crowd has just started partying. They just now getting dressed. They just not getting suited up. Hallelujah. But there's a bigger party in the kingdom right now. Hallelujah. There's a better party in the kingdom right now. We are the sons of the Most High God. Beside our God, there is none other. I say we are the sons of great God Jehovah. Bible say Jehovah Shalom. The Bible say Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. I say our God is with us. Emmanuel. We ought to give God a better praise. I say we ought to give him a better praise. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm in the house of God. This shall be a house of worship. The devil wants you to be all weighted down. The devil wants you all weighted down. What's the matter, Zion? You don't praise like you used to praise. You don't sing like you used to sing. You don't stop and dance like you used to dance. What's the matter now? But you need to shake the devil and say, God done forgave me. I done moved on in God. I'm not where I used to be. Come on, somebody. 
God has drew me with love and kindness and I received the testing of the Lord. Come on somebody, but I'm still going to run on. I'm going to run on and I'm going to fight on. Come on somebody, don't you give up and don't you turn back. Don't you give up and don't you turn back. There's nothing back there. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Come on, somebody. We were once dead, but now we've been brought alive. Come on, somebody. We were once in darkness, but now we in the light. The Bible even called us children of light. The Bible even say, ye were once darkness, but now you're light. Is anybody hearing God? You don't have a reason to frown. You don't have a reason to look down. You should have looked down when you didn't have God. But when we were dead in our trespasses and sin, yet he still gave his son to reconcile us. I get excited. Alice, you know where we come from? We come from a real world. We don't come from a pretty world. We come from a real world. I get excited when God say, even you, even you, I'm calling you. I get excited because God pulled some of us out of the club and he said, come on. God pulled some of us out of lesbianism. God said, come on. Some of us were homosexuals and God still said, come on. Because when you get in Christ, you're going to be a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's not what he used to be. All things are passed away. Behold what? Behold what? All things. How many things? All things have become what? New. We ought to give God a better praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't despise your testimony. Because your testimony going to help somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints, let's not leave out of here heavy laden, burning down. Not if you truly gave it to God. Not if you truly gave it to God. I was saying something about the awesomeness of God. I was saying on this, I believe, Sunday, is that in all of his magnificence, all of his power there is nobody that can check god there is nobody that can chasten god there it, it, it just don't exist he has no one to answer to but in all of his magnificence when one of his sheep get off course he'll come and say come let us reason together now that's a loving god with all of his power He'll still come and say, let us reason together. In other words, let us sit down and talk. Now, that's a merciful God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He holds the power of life and death in his hands. Come on, somebody. But he'll just say, come, Tanya, let us reason together. Come, Paul, let us talk about this thing. That's a loving God. And if you don't praise him, you just don't know him. Because to know him is to love him. Oh! 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 Hey! 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 We ought to be shouting here. Oh! Come on, let's praise him.
everybody, everything that's got breath, get up and praise him. Everybody praise him. If you got breath in your body, God say, get up and praise him. He'll come and see about you if you just get up and praise him right now. Those of you that want to be saved, get up and praise God. Praise him with everything that's in you. He's going to come see about you.
praise the Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Come on. Glory to God. I heard somebody say it was about this time we just started getting dressed when we were in the world. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're going to move on. But it's just something in my spirit. Does something just keep ringing in my spirit? And that something said, is so sweet. Hallelujah. To be saved. Come on, sister.
ancient anointing <laughs> that's the original there praise the Lord oh my God you love him saints I'm so glad I'm saved isn't it just good to be saved oh Lord I'm so glad I'm saved and I'm glad that I want to be holy I'm so glad I just I want to be holy Dr. Kelly, we just, it's just a blessing to want to be holy. So many people don't even want to be holy. Glory to God. Some people hear this word and they just, they're not going to do that. Amen. But it's good when you can hear it and say, I want to be that. I, I just want to be what God want me to be. Amen. That's a blessing when you have that kind of heart. When you got that kind of a heart. Praise the Lord. I just love him tonight. Amen. And I, I just thank God for his visitation. Glory to God. I thank him for his visitation. Glory to God. God has visited us. He's visited us. And, and as Apostle Mike said, glory to God. Amen. He done took our sin and thrown it into a sea of forgetfulness. He's not going to bring it up no more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's go forward from here. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Before we take our offering, amen. Apostle Bias, is there anything you want to say? Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You don't have to move, Doc. I'm not going to be that long. What I'd like to say, the word that we've heard this week, now comes the rubber meeting the road. When we leave here, we got to walk this word out. And one thing I found about God, he is so faithful that if we came to this altar and we're carrying anything back, God is going to be faithful enough to show it to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you guys to get really get ready. Agape, BT, Global Impact. Amen. Get ready to walk out what God has said. When God begins to ordain a relationship, one of the things that I did not know but I understand now is something when it comes down to the walk. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing you got to do, you got to walk with God. That's right, that's right. And if you're walking with God, it is easy to walk with each other. Amen? Because we have the same God down on the inside. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm looking forward to what God is, has done, what he's going to do. I said to somebody the other day, if... BT and Agape got to be the example in this city. Let us be the example. As the Bible says, the two have become one. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll be a demonstration 
of what the Father is saying. And it's all throughout the week if you notice. Both ministries incorporating with each other. In the praise, in the dance, amen, hallelujah. And we saw God being glorified, amen. Hallelujah. We saw the Father being glorified. So let's get ready, saints. Let's get ready to walk this thing out. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's get ready to walk this thing out. Don't let this be just another good message. Hallelujah. But let's begin to walk this thing out. Those that God puts in relationship, walk with them. Hallelujah. Through hard times, through good times, through bad times, walk this thing out. Hallelujah. And it can be easy if you're walking with God. Hallelujah. Every person in this building, under the sound of Apostle Mary Banks' voice, we have heard God. He has poured his heart out to us. And now it's time for us to walk. Jackie, we got to walk like daughter and father now. Can't be no isms and schisms amongst us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to listen to the prophet that sets in the room that will confirm the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Find out my place, a place of installing the word in the hearts of the people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because God said, I call shepherds after my own heart. Hallelujah. We have repented. It has been thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. The joy of our salvation is back. And now it's time to walk it out. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. I, I'm just blessed. Amen. I'm just blessed by seeing, amen, what God is doing. And, and as the apostle said, if we have to be the example in this city, we're going to be the example. Amen. 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 And we're not going to compete with one another. Amen. We're going to work together. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not going to let, we're not going to let no wedges come between us and we're not going to let people come between us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to walk this thing out. We're going to prove to this city, amen, that there is a such thing as apostolic order. Glory to God. And that Jesus is alive and well. Glory to God. And he is the new man inside of us. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus tonight. Amen. And we're going to worship him in our giving. But before we do that, are there any announcements? Before we, 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 we take the offering, are there any announcements? Because after the offering, glory to God, we want to, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Pastor Thomas or whatever comes after that. Glory to God. But if there's any announcements, let's make them now. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. I just want to remind us that uh, Freeport is... November the 7th, 8th, and 9th, I believe it is. Amen. Thursday, is it Thursday or Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Praise the Lord. In November. So those of you that want to go to Freeport, amen. Especially you leaders, let's go and support Bishop Marvin. Praise the Lord. Amen. They have a new building over there. It is awesome. It has a nice, beautiful facility. Praise the Lord that we're purchasing over there. Praise the Lord. So let's go and support them. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Bishop Dexter. Bishop Dexter, we're going to give space to you if, you, if there's anything you want to share. Amen. Bishop Thomas, glory to God. Anything you want to share, glory to God. Bishop Wright, amen. Amen. Pastor Rowe, Bishop, Bishop McGirt. Pastor Thomas, Amen. Bishop Pryor, Prophet, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. I was glad to see my daughter come in. Amen. Pastor Belinda, Amen. Pastor Sean, Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad they turn y'all loose tonight and get over here. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. God is so good. All right. Now I guess we can worship him and I give him. Can we do that now? Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Praise the Lord. Good. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. I hope we all have been blessed in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to worship God in our giving tonight. We have some hospitations on the floor that have envelopes. Saints, I'm, this is our last service, and I, am, I want us to, to work toward BTBN. We need some, some, some boxes, some cable boxes. Uh, I don't know what they call them, amino boxes. They call them amino boxes, I think. Encoders or something like that. Um, to send to the cable company so we can expand BTBN. You know, like if, um, uh, like Comcast, if we were going to be on Comcast, we'd have to send them a box. Amen. So that I, they could pick up our signal. So where we are down in the, in the islands, amen, we could, wherever, whatever cable network is down there, amen, we have to send them a box so that they can pick up our signal and they'll carry our channel on their net, on their cable network, amen. And so we want to expand BTBN. We want to send it out on other cable networks. So we need, we need some amino boxes. And each one of these boxes are, amen, they cost somewhere between five and $600. So we're trying to get those boxes and some, some, some cameras. Glory to God. We need the boxes and some cameras. Amen. And we ask, I'm asking you to help me. If you just stand with me, if I could get, amen, if I could get half of us in here to just sacrifice $100 toward it. Somebody may say, well, I'll just buy one of those boxes. I'll give you $500 on a box. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll just spend the $500 and buy a box. Praise the Lord. If you can, if you can afford to do that and you, you want to give that as a special offering, get an envelope so you can get the tax credit for it. Amen. Glory to God. We can keep track of the tax credit for you. Amen. But somebody may say, I'll buy a box. Or maybe a couple of people will get together and say, we'll buy a box. Amen. We'll buy an amino box. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that, you know, um, Brother Ian is, would be so happy to know that we raised a, a good offering for BTBN so we can do some of the things, get the equipment we need. This is, this is your way of getting the gospel out. You may not be able to go to these nations, but if you can help us send it, that's fruit bearing. That's fruit bearing too, that glory to God. Amen. If you can help us go into these nations, bless the Lord. Amen. That'll be a blessing. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. So let's get the best offering we can give tonight. If, if God is telling you to give a special offering, amen, toward that, then don't, don't let the devil rob you of it. Amen. Don't let him rob you of it. Now, one of the things I want to say, I, amen, I, I, the, I was supposed to meet with all the pastors and whatnot tonight, but that's not going to be fruitful. And I, you already woe out now from praising and carrying on. Amen. So I ain't, no, ain't no way, glory to God, you're going to be attentive in my meeting. So, amen. God done took precedence. Amen. He done took over and usurped authority. So, amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule that meeting online. And we're going to, um, um, we're going to meet with you online. That'll be all right, Daniel. We can do the demonstration online for them. Praise the Lord. Uh, but I want to say that I would like to see all of the pastors, bishops, this, this, this is what's in my heart now, all the pastors, all the bishops, all of the senior pastors, all of the assistant pastors, all of the, the youth pastors, all of our ordained ministers regardless of what your ordination is. I want to be able to go to the computer and click on the partnership program and see your name there. All of the leaders should be supporting the partnership plan. All of the leaders. If you, if you have to go as low as $25 a month, you should be in support of it. This is your ministry. Isn't that right? This is your ministry, and we cannot ask others to support our own thing if we don't support it. So I'm, you know, I, I monitor that partnership plan 
glory to God. And I want to see more leaders on there. And, and it's a very good plan. We give back so much, glory to God, things that would cost you. Amen. You come to World Conference, you don't have to pay for your materials. You come to School of the Prophets, you don't have to pay for your materials. Amen. Some of those plans, give them to you free. Amen. Glory to God. You, you belong to the, um, the virtual pastor's class or the virtual evangelist class. Even at $25, the, the silver plan, it's free. You can be a part of those, those, those training courses that Pastor Mike is doing, free of charge. We pay him for you. We pay him for you if you're a partner. Amen. We pay uh, Michael Thomas Ministries, amen, on your behalf. So the partnership plan gives back. It really gives back. And we just want... The partnership plan allows us to have consistency in our finances. If we have people that are consistently giving every month, glory to God, there's, then now there's consistency in our, in our finances and we're able to plan more. We're able to plan and, and budget. We're able to set up a budget based upon what we know we have coming in. Amen? So I want to see all those ordained leaders. First, I want to see your names on the partnership plan. And those of you that love Bible teachers in the national, if you're not, not a minister, glory to God, get in the partnership plan and get all of the benefits that come along with it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, let's give God the best offering we can give him tonight. Amen? If you want to buy some cameras or help buy some cameras, or if you got a special offering, put it in my hand. If it's special for the cameras or if special for the Nino, amen? Just put it in my hand tonight. I would love to see if God is really touching somebody's heart to help us in those areas. Amen? Those of you that are online, glory to God. You, I know you've enjoyed these services all the week. It would be robbery to you if you didn't give God an offering. Amen? So click on donation and follow the promptings. Bless the Lord and give him an offering because he has really given to us this week. He has given to us this week. And one thing about being online, amen, you can't be here in the natural with us, glory to God. But you know what? You're here, glory to God. You're here because that spirit is coming through that broadcast. Bless the Lord. And a uh, young lady got up in church uh, last week, I believe it was, in, in, in Jamaica. And she, she said, I'm the fruit doc of the broadcast. She said, you were in, I think it was World Conference or School of Prophets or something, and I was preaching. And I made an altar call, and she just, she received the Holy Ghost. She was down in Trench Town, and she received the Holy Ghost, amen, that night. And the glory to God, and that's been, oh, that's been, what, a couple of years ago. And she is ministering today, praise the Lord, amen, just, you know, loving the Lord and, 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 and working ministry, praise you, Jesus, in, in her own church down in, in, in our church in Trench Town, praise the Lord. So that's, that, that tells me, see, that's fruit. That's fruit. And, and they called me and they said, Doc, you know, it, it, so-and-so, so-and-so got saved in Trench Town. She got saved. Last night when you made the altar call, she got saved. Got full of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I, I, that's a blessing. So that's why we have these broadcasts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So give God an offering. Bless the Lord. Everybody ready to give now? If you need credit cards, see this young lady standing right there? She's got a square up in her hand. Amen. She'll, she'll swipe your credit card right there. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Thomas asked that nobody leaves after the offering. She said, please, nobody leave. Then nobody leave. I'm not going to leave either. Praise the Lord. Because she, she said it like, Nobody leave. So, okay. Nobody leave. Amen. Y'all look so beautiful in your white. I just love that. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. In the hands of the hospitation.
satisfied with what they gave all hearts and minds are clear 
Father, we thank you for the offering tonight. We thank you for those who obeyed you and those who desired to give but might not have had anything to give. We pray that you will bless your people at their points of need, God. Bless them spiritually and naturally. They're going and they're coming, Father. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed say, Amen. Pastor Thomas. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Founders Week 2014. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. He is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to um, ask our apostle if she would come. If we would put her a chair in the center. Amen. We're not going to be before you long. Amen. But this is Founders Week where we celebrate the founding of this ministry as well as the birthday, amen, of our apostle. A, her birthday, saints. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. And saints, um, just so you'll know, um, if you're hungry, amen, God has even sought to us eating naturally. Amen. Bishop Pry in April got some ribs and chicken sandwiches for sale. Amen. Ribs and chicken. Amen. See April Glover. Amen. She's outside. And um, where's the possible? <laughs> yes. Um, the possible Bishop Samuel and Pastor Louise Hughes. Yes, they send their love and appreciation to you, Dr. Banks, for many years of true and faithful ministry. Amen. Yes. Yes, they send their love. Amen. All right. Amen. This has been an awesome week, has it not? Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Amen. And we're going to start off tonight with our first presentation from the MIA board, Fort Lauderdale. We're going to ask all the MIAs to come forward, please, at this time to make their presentation. MIAs, the MIA board. Another mic. The International MIA board. If we have any MIAs, come up, please, with Terry. If any MIAs in the All house. The MIAs. All the MIAs. Please. Amen. These are our ministers and assistants. true to the vision and we can always count on you to deliver a sure word that um, has changed our lives and changed our heart and I just thank God for you I appreciate you we love you and one of the MIA board is one of those auxiliaries that were designed for spiritual development and we appreciate that because when I came into this ministry I had no clue what God wanted to do with me but you labored with me, you loved me through some very difficult times, some very precious times that I hold dear to my heart and I will never forget. So on behalf of all of us, we thank you, we love you, and God bless you on your birthday. Amen. 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 <laughs> my Lord Jesus. <laughs> Yes, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I won't I won't belabor the time by reading oh they all signed it. Praise the Lord. They all see they all 
or write something. And these are the things that encourage you when you, you know, you go back and you read over the cards and whatnot. <laughs> That's encouraging. That's, that's that's me. Yeah, yes, Lord, that's me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's isn't that me? That's yes. me. That's definitely me there. Oh dear. Oh whoa. That really me right there, right there, right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful, yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. I'm going to have on so much stuff. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> Thank you, MIA. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh. Are they nice, huh? Check it out. Oh, saints, these are so nice ladies. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's just me, saints. <laughs> That's just me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Let's you give so it up for the MIAs. <laughs> Can I keep this? Oh, okay. I can keep my bag. Praise well, the Lord. Now, we want to look at your cake before we cut it up. Yeah. I get another cake. Amen. It's the third one. This <laughs> Amen. Happy anniversary, Dr. Baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to ask the PSAs, please. The PSA, the pastoral service aides. If the PSAs would come, please. PSAs, Sister Regina Tillman, I believe, is the spokesperson. <laughs> hey, Sister Regina. Just sweet. I always have been. Can we get Sister Regina on the mic? Come on, PSAs, all PSAs. you and we just thank God for everything that you had done for us and, and uh, you was in our heart and so I'm up here on the behalf of the PSA to present to you this, uh, this token Amen. and pray that God you be able to use it Amen. Uh, and we just thank God for you Amen, Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. This one you this is true. No, right here. This is you say. Oh. This one the PSA. This one. This one to you. But anyway, yes, we thank God. We're going to have your birthday. <laughs> On behalf of the PSA. Thank you, PSA. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Praise the 
good Lord. <laughs> that just does your card. <laughs> At this time, we're going to have the Fort Lauderdale, the hospitations. Hospitations, all hospitations. Come forward at this time. All hospitations. <laughs> all hospitations. These are our service boards that serve so faithfully. birthday Dr. Banks. Um, we often talk about you in our meetings and oftentimes I refer to you as that one that you don't have the opportunity you know to say I don't want to do it you know I want to have a sit down every time you come in one of these settings you're it <laughs> you're the one that's got a minister and you have demonstrated to us what it is to have a servant's heart and you have been such an example of denying yourself. I often think about the times you probably have family get-togethers that you can't go to because God works is calling for you. And I just want you to know that your work is not in vain, that you are an example to all of us, and we strive to be as you are, a worker of God's purpose and kingdom. Amen? Amen. We love you. Right. Happy birthday. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for being relentless. Thank you for... Majority of us here weren't at the conception of the ministry, but if you didn't keep going, we wouldn't have been a part of it. Except Alice, she's real old. <laughs> but for the babies like me, for the young ones like me, <laughs> If you didn't continue, you know, to completely give yourself over to God and follow him, 
we wouldn't be able to hear this word. So we just want to say thank you. From the beginning, because I've been here for quite a long time, um, <laughs> me and Mike and a bunch of the other Theo, we were all kids. And, you know, Doc, you've been so instrumental in my life. Um, times when I was in sin, you did not hesitate to tell me that you would come to the gates of hell to get me. And in my heart, I believe that she would. <laughs> I brought guys to church, and she'll come and tell them you can't have her. She belongs to God, and Woo! run them right out of here. I could tell hundreds of stories about Dr. Banks doing the plays and all types of uh, experiences that we've had together. But you are my spiritual mother. Sometimes I can see those little beady eyes on me saying, don't do it, Dr. Banks. She still got the vision. <laughs> she still can see it. Don't even think about it. So we love you, Doc, and I love you. That's right. our music department. Amen. Well, I there sisterhood. Sisterhood, Sister Tierra McIntosh. Amen. Can a couple of ladies come and stand with Tierra, please, just to represent the sisterhood? <laughs> Hello, Apostle Banks. Oftentimes when I see you online, I do call you Grandma Doc. That's the insider. <laughs> And even though I don't know you personally or I haven't been here since the beginning of the ministry, but your ministry has influenced my life, especially through my pastor, Tanya. <laughs> you have, um, I don't know, just something about, about you. I can't even put words to it, just like your spirit and how you are and the level of word that you teach. I knew that I was supposed to be here. Just a small testimony. When I was about... About 13, 14, I started coming here consistently, and I started playing the drums, but I began to really hear, you know, the word, and I remember dreaming about you three times. You were, you had the chalkboard, and I was sitting in one of the chairs, and you were writing on the chalkboard like you was teaching, and I don't remember that, you know, I've never been here for that long to see you actually do that, but I'll never forget me dreaming that and then seeing my life here, how I've grown and how I've changed because of the level of word. So this is just a small token of our love for you. Mm -hmm. right, and we just want to say happy birthday. Can I sing happy birthday for you? Yeah, you sure can. Okay, I'll sing. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you happy birthday dear dr banks happy birthday to you right. <laughs> praise the lord all right, all right sisterhood God chose him. Praise you, Jesus. Thanks, 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 thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks. And thanks. <laughs> and thanks. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's give it up for the sisterhood. Lifesavers. Lifesavers International. All right, Lifesavers. Come on, Lifesavers. Still saving lives. Amen. All 30 years the strong. Amen. All around the globe. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Dr. Banks, um, I, tonight's message just went right along with my heart tonight. Mm -hmm. And I remember you calling me up to sit right there in front of you 20 years ago. And I hadn't even had one class, one course. And you told me that God told you to make me director over Lifesavers. I thought you were nuts. <laughs> I didn't see it at all. And it was tested, it was tried, but I have learned, and believe me, because you took a woman who was suicidal, ready to do it, within 24 hours, God changed my life. My God. And it's been tested every, ever since. I remember that um, I had to make some notes. <laughs> so I wouldn't uh, forget. I remember even before we took this over and we were even clear of all the thoughts and the mindsets we had, we were running clinics out at 441 State Road 7 and crying right along with the clients. Amen. Remember that? Amen. Remember that, Clem? Amen. Yes, crying right along with them, Carrie. <laughs> remember that? Then I remember the time that you sent me to Jamaica all by myself. <laughs> and you stood up in a conference, a little bit bigger than this, and you said, I have a special surprise for everybody. We have our international director of Lifesavers, and she is going to be holding clinics this afternoon. And she is going to be ministering to everyone. So come on out for our international director of Lifesavers. <laughs> and I sat there and I thought, she just lied to the people. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody she just lied. Because I don't want to, I want to cover her. <laughs> but she just lied to the people. Because I didn't know what I was doing. And I walked into the room after lunch, and Bishop Primus and Bishop Desmond were sitting way in the back. And I'm looking at them, and I'm going... And they're sitting back there, Grace, going... But you know what? She's a real apostle because she had a vision of the gift God was going to develop in me. Yes. And I had to know that he could even use me. My Lord. That's yes. what it was all yes, about. Lord. And during that clinic, I discovered God could use me. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Amen. And it's an encouragement to every one of you if you think that you're so different, duh, Amen. Amen. that God can't use you, trust the vision of the apostle. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, Doc, we have a little cash for you. Uh -huh. But more importantly, uh -huh. we have some fruit. Oh, yes, definitely. Hallelujah. So I would like... At this time, 
all of our marriage ministers, would you please stand to your feet? Those who minister in marriage, hallelujah, no matter where you are. Those who minister in parenting, please stand. Hallelujah. Yes, those that go into the jails and the prisons, please stand and you can stand with us, Pastor Clum. Come on. She founded the jail ministry. Come stand up. Amen. Okay. Also, those who go into the SOS Foster Children's Village, please stand up. Amen. Amen. Miami Lifesavers, stand up please. Yes. Palm Beach Lifesavers, stand up please. Palm Beach still here? No. Yes, there she is. Okay. There they are. Right. Bell Glade, Dave Indian Dave. Town, yes. Jamaica Online, yes. Canada Online. Yes. And finally, if you have yes. been touched by the vision of Lifesavers, through this apostle, please stand to your feet and let's let her see the fruit of her obedience. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Life. All right. Okay. Isn't that gorgeous? All right. Wow. Praise the Lord. Lifesavers International. My God. God is good. Ain't God good? He is good. good. Amen. Somebody uh, has a green Camry W814NM. You're blocking someone. A green Camry. All right. At this time, we're going to um, West Palm Beach, Indian Town, and Bell Glade. West Palm Beach, Indian Town, and Belgium. Woo wee, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Indian Town, Palm Beach, Belgium. Hey, thanks. All right, Bishop. <laughs> This is part of my region, Indian Town, Bell Glade, Palm Beach. That's right, you're the regional bishop over there, right? <laughs> Got about that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm one of the cake makers, so I wish it would be robbery, not the mystery. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Got some chocolate on it? Oh, all right, now. Got some chocolate on it. Hey, Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is so pretty. Can y'all see that? Oh, beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's for us. Uh, there you go. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? Uh-huh. You like that? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Sweet. She makes some of the best cakes. Yes, she does. <laughs> okay, oh, be careful with that. <laughs> From you, baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's that traveler there, baby Lord. That's that traveler. Be a force of beauty. Oh, fair minerals. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. To Dr. Banks from Veronica. What is this, a gift card, Veronica? Yes, $100. Oh, $100, praise you, Jesus. I just need to know how much on that thing. I'll go ahead and get me some baked up from, I love bare minerals. Oh, love bare minerals. A little bit cheaper than Mac, too. Uh, yeah, I really mm. like that. Well, Doc, we wanted to just say to you, um, thank you for being our apostle and um, talking, many people are talking about their experience. I don't know if I ever shared this with you. If you remember about 20 years ago, I came with another pastor that was coming to join 
and they didn't and I came with that pastor being nosy and the night before I had a dream of a woman standing in the room that handed me a scroll and I believe that woman was you because ever since I have been a part of Bible teachers um, your word has changed my life and one of the things I want you to know and that's why I say you have encouraged me so much in so many situations that I've gone through you have always been an example that I can reference on what I should do Praise the Lord. always doc because so many situations in my life I you have gone through and I would say what would you know I know we say what would Jesus do but I got a living example here and so I would look at that and I would follow that pattern because you are, you, you know, as we say, lead by example. You have been an example on what to do because you know you've experienced everyday situations and we got everyday situations that we deal with. Yeah. And I thank God for that because sometimes when you think you're down and out, God will show you this is what my apostle did and this is what will lead us to him. So I thank you. I'm going to let Pastor Wanda say something because she's trying to get out of it. <laughs> Praise him. Um, Doc, you remember when I first came in, uh -huh. you were teaching Ministry of Reconciliation. Yes. And I was just visiting, and Sarah him, brought me here. I had my salon, and I was sitting in the class, and you looked at me, and you said, you think you could live this, don't you? And I said, yep, I do. And from that point of coming here after that, being in the church, thinking that I was saved, um, I had never been to a Terry service or anything, and I came in, and the first um, Terry service, I got saved here. My Lord. I got saved in here, which I thought I was already saved, but God saved me here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you end up, I end up joining the church, and you put me on the MIA board. And being placed on the M MIA board, I, I'm just determined I'm going to live holy because all them seeing eyes are going to see right through me. <laughs> so I had to get holy, really, really holy. Uh -huh. And um, I remember you always telling me that I, I always looked at all the other girls, Phyllis and everybody, Lisa, and all of them, I'm like, man, they really giving over. I said, but I'll just help support the ministry. I can't do that. And you say, you always making up your own calling. But you told me I was going to preach this gospel. Yes, and I said, I don't think so. It requires too much. But your word has come to pass in my life. And I wouldn't do anything other than this. My I wouldn't Lord. live any other way. And not having a manual on being a pastor and not knowing how to be a pastor. My travels with you, and you took me out for a year with you and went everywhere. Yep. I saw the sacrifice and all that it took to be a pastor. So even though, you know, there was no one there to just train me, I saw enough, I experienced enough, I handled enough to know what I needed to do to hold fast until help came. Amen. 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 And I and I just feel blessed to be in a ministry that even though I'm in the backwoods, I always believe that because you are a real apostle, if I'm ever out of boundary, if I'm ever in any trouble, if anything the enemy want to do to me, God will always reveal it to you, and you are going to intervene in my life. Now, I trust that. I could not do this without trusting that. That is what sustained me to remain out there, because I know that I face the enemy in, in, in being in his territory and not being skillful in it. I depend on your apostleship to cover me. My Lord. And, then, I, and I love you. Doc, we love you. BTI Belgrade. Um, his words can't even express the love that we have for you and the things that you have done for us through living holy, being an example, 
And personally, I do appreciate you. I watch your life. I watch it every day because I want to be that holy woman. Yes. So I just thank the Lord for you. Um, I'm also presenting for MBM Global as well. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> I thank the Lord for the opportunity. Where Miss? Well, she's not here. But nevertheless, we from MBM Global want to say thank you. And this is just a small token for what you have done for us throughout the years. We do appreciate you. All right. Amen. MBM Global Conferences. All right. I love these packages. All right. We almost done. Brotherhood and Deacons make their way up while she's opening. Brotherhood and Deacons. <laughs> Blessing to know. Whoa. <laughs> okay, envelope. Praise you, Jesus. Lord. Oh my goodness. Praise you, Jesus. Money stuffed on both sides. Praise you. Good gracious. Everybody ain't broke. I know you're right. Praise you, Jesus. Just for a lot of them. Just me Just you. Just Lauderdale, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me oh. <laughs> wow. Gift cards. Macy's. Macy's. Ooh, we Macy's. going to the Macy's. We going to Macy's. We going to Macy's. <laughs> we going to Macy's. <laughs> you coming to carry my bag? <laughs> Well, that's all I'll be doing, honey. Because <laughs> Tanya can't buy nothing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're going to Macy's tomorrow. Lord. Praise the Lord. Ooh. Praise Jesus. They having a one-day sale? <laughs> all right now. Boy. They having a one-day <laughs> sale tomorrow. we we'll be right there. All right, Doc. Oh, there go my chairman. Our deacons oh, yeah. and our brotherhood. Head of the brotherhood. Doc, on behalf of the Brotherhood and Deacon Board, I know they feel the same way I do. Um, I know I came to Florida years ago seeking, you know, my life, education, and everything, but God had another plan, which I knew before I even got here. But when God has a plan for your life, it is so difficult to get around. That's right. I mean, you put, which is when I look back on it, I thank God for it. Amen. I can see just from where I'm looking now, you could get really consumed in the world. Yeah. The world will consume you yes, with things. And the more things that you have, the more attached to this world you become. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot, it's really difficult to detach yourself once you get attached. Mm -hmm. So I repent tonight to the Lord because I never wanted the responsibility. I know I have a gift of giving and doing, and that's easy. Mm -hmm. it, it came very easy, but to do what you do and what Bishop do and even Pastor Tanya. I used to be like Pastor Tanya. I didn't want to be bothered with no people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely you have to give up your life. That's right. When you deal yeah. 